Can you genuinely say you're confident Biden will be able to do the job of president four years from now? Because I, I can't. But my God, we live in unprecedented times. This is exciting. This is, we're going through something. I mean, embrace this. It's different. So if things go as they are, the Democrats will hand Trump Congress and a mandate. So I need people to stop believing in the hypnosis that Joe Biden has any chance of winning. He has a near 0% chance of winning. All these things- Stop, <laughs> Tank, you went too far. Stop with the issues. We're just talking about his fitness, you. Now you and I are gonna fight. Stop with the issues. These I'm, are, back, I'm with destiny, I'm back with destiny. So if Biden okay. turns into Bernie Sanders, I would support him wholeheartedly. Yeah. Okay, welcome, 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 one and all, to yet another episode of WIC TV. Today is a very special episode, gang. After President Biden's disastrous debate performance a little over a week ago, many have expressed concerns about not only his ability to win in November, but his mental competence and whether or not he's experiencing cognitive decline. The question becomes, should Biden drop out of the race? Or, despite this misstep, is he still the Democratic Party's best chance to beat former President Trump? We've a great lineup today. With us, we are joined by Representative Joe Walsh, formerly representing the 8th District of the state of Illinois, uh, Cenk Uger from the Young Turks, and friends of the channel, Destiny and Brianna Wu. Uh, I guess we'll start with this. Uh, Representative Walsh, we're gonna start with you. What are your thoughts on this, please? Uh, good to be with you all. Look, the only thing that matters is Donald Trump cannot win. Donald Trump is a is 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 un-American. He's lawless. He's a psychopath. He can't be anywhere near the White House again. That's all that matters. And we're at a point now where I don't think it's possible for Joe Biden to beat him anymore because the issue the issue has got to be Trump's unfitness. The issue cannot be Joe Biden's unfitness, i.e. his age. So I don't think Biden gives us the best opportunity to keep that psychopath out of the White House. Okay, thank you. And we'll get into it as we go, I'm sure. Uh, next up, we have a friend of the channel, Brianna Wu. What are your thoughts here? So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll respect my good friend Joe, uh, but I think something that happened with his party is they lost the ability to be able to challenge, uh, you know, the powers within the party. And as a result of that, you know, uh, the Republican Party basically became a cult. We don't have that culture in the Democratic Party. And I actually think the conversation we're having right now is very, very healthy. It's a, a sign of a party that is uh, not a cult. So I know it's very strong stressful right now. I've been yelled at all week. I'm sure everyone on this panel has been, uh, but I think it's to our benefit. And I think it's worth remembering all of us are here for the same reason. We want to beat Donald Trump and we realize democracy is on the line. There are several things that really give me a lot of concern uh, with this, but I don't feel as strongly as I think my good friend Jenk does. Uh, you know, the first is a president that is only has 36% approval rating is effectively uh, unelectable in my view. There's not a precedent for this. And you know, even though I understand it's very tricky, especially the compliance things with uh, uh, getting uh, the money shifter around and building campaign offices and getting canvassing operations, I really don't see another good option at this point. Uh, as Joe said, the problem is Biden's health is going to dominate the news cycle from here on out. And every second we're talking about that, we're not talking about the existential threat that Donald Trump is to democracy. So, uh, you know, I feel like our odds are slightly better if we change candidates, but my mind could be changed. Okay, we'll get into it as we go. Thank you for being here. Jenk uh, Uger, please, what do you got? Yeah, uh, this is the easiest decision of all time. Uh, he's at 36% approval when he won last time in 2020. Remember, he barely won the Electoral College by about 44,000 votes in three swing states, which is 
just a microscopic lead. And at that point, he had a 52% approval rating. Now he's at 36. I did the math on it. That's a 16 point difference. So the, the folks who look at the interview from uh, last night and go, well, he survived. He answered the questions. That's not within a million miles of good enough. He has to make up a 16 point deficit in, in, in that regard. And guys, a, if you follow politics, you know an incumbent under 50% is very likely to lose. Biden is under 40%. To my knowledge, no federal candidate in U.S. history that's an incumbent in an election year has ever won when they're in the 30s. So the opposition, I guess, that wants Biden to stay in, their main argument is Joe Biden is the most miraculous politician that anyone has ever seen. And he's going to rise from the ashes and not just stay stable, but make up 16 points in approval rating. It's just la la land. It's total fantasy land. This is a look, I'm we're having fun here to debate a thing that should not be debated, partly because mainstream media and the Democratic Party has created this mirage. And so we have to spend time tearing down this uh, theater that, that's been constructed that is nothing but propaganda. It's been propaganda from day one. He's been disastrously behind. The debate only made it worse and made it more obvious. But if you want to run a race saying, oh yeah, I think that guy who looks like a cadaver is going to make the greatest comeback in American political history, you're basically saying, I don't mind Trump winning at all. I'm totally good with it. I just don't want to offend the feelings of the powerful. And that's really not a sound argument to say the least. I'll, okay. I'll be polite. Okay. <laughs> Well, thanks for that, and I'm sure we'll get into it as we go. Last but certainly not least, Destiny, what do you have? I think that there are two competing outlooks that we should keep in mind, or not competing, but concurrent outlooks that we should keep in mind when we're thinking about who we want to be uh, the Democratic nominee. Um, for the first part, I think that it's important that we pick our strongest candidate. Uh, I hope... I, I'm not sure, but I hope that everybody here agrees with that, that we should put forth the strongest candidate who can mobilize the most votes for the Democratic Party. And right now, for reasons we'll get into, I think that, for better or for worse, is still Joe Biden. Uh, I also think it's important to keep in mind that when we criticize our party um, or when we criticize our candidates, I think that the only criticism that really matters are from people that support the party. Um, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of voices, I believe Jenk is one of them, I'm not as sure about Joe Walsh, who are highly critical of Biden because of his debate performance, but before the debate performance, they were never going to vote for Biden anyway because of his position on Israel or Gaza or lack of, uh, you know, whatever minimum wage or socialized health care or whatever other reason. So when you have people that are highly critical of these people, it's important to know that they're, in their mind, their best interest isn't for the party, it's for whatever particular candidate that they like, um, which is why when we have these conversations, it's very hard to get somebody to put forth another candidate that they think would be able to outperform Biden um, for, yeah, for a variety of reasons we'll get into. Okay, I guess we'll start with that. For the people who say that Joe Biden should drop out of the race, who do you think should replace Joe Biden? Who do you have in mind? Uh, go ahead. Well, I don't know. I, we, maybe we should start with Destiny again because he apparently wants Trump to win. Uh, because only a person so detached from reality would look at Biden and go, that's our strongest candidate. So uh, I, I don't know where your allegiances lie. I mean, you just questioned our allegiances. So I, I desperately want Trump to lose. We all do. He's a maniac, total, utter maniac. Uh, but by the way, the clowns you support lost to him in 2016 and are getting humiliated by him in 2024. So where's your allegiance? It seems to me that you, I mean, look, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but uh, it, it, it almost feels like a false flag operation to say anyone who wants the strongest candidate for the Democratic Party is with Trump. Wink, wink. We should have the weakest possible candidate against Trump. Boy, I really want Trump to lose. Wink, wink. No, of course you should have the strongest candidate. How is this a debate? And if you think Joe Biden's the strongest candidate the Democratic Party has, you apparently despise the Democratic Party. You, you think even less of them than any Republican in the country. Are you telling me there's no one better than a guy who can't finish a sentence? This is preposterous. So a few things. So, I mean, if you want to talk about the, the jokes that we put up in 2016, 
Uh, I would awkwardly remind you that Hillary Clinton uh, was beating Trump polling initially, which is the thing that you're weighing in heavily now is how they're doing in the polls. And secondly, she had phenomenal debate mm -hmm. performance against Donald Trump, something that didn't help her whatsoever when it came time uh, to, to defeating him in the election. So, and these seem to be two things that you're weighing very heavily in choosing Biden or not. But um, to go back on the thing I about su that. supporting Biden, well, did it, was it not the case that prior to this debate, you didn't want to support Biden anyway? Like, would you have voted for Biden over Trump prior to the debate? I would never vote for Trump in a million years. I didn't ask you I'm to vote for Trump. I said, would you have, would you have voted for sure Biden? I'm, I'm asking, I asked, would you vote for Biden prior to this debate performance over Trump? Would you have voted so, for Biden? So I think I, I, Destin Abbott is yes. super clear. I ran against Biden. I think Biden's a terrible candidate. And I knew that. And you gaslit your audience the whole way. Oh, yeah, he could win in the 30s. He could win. He could right, win. I still didn't hear an oh, answer to that. You have to bow okay. your head and obey the, the officials in the Democratic Party. Who cares about beating Trump? Let's just obey, obey, right. obey. I do, right? I do want to make Hillary Clinton. You want to talk about Hillary Clinton in the polls? Hillary Clinton did not have a five point lead. This is what I'm trying to get through your thick skull. The Democratic candidate has needs a five-point lead nationally in order to win the Electoral College. So when Joe Biden's down by six in the New York Times poll, he's down by 11. He's got to make up 11 points in that. There's no way he can do that. Hillary okay, is it? can I appeal to the moderator? Before, Wait, I want to I want to do a moderator on. appeal. Hold can you make him answer that question? Yes, I can. However, I do want to hear from some other people who are trying to get sure. in. But also, I just want an easy yes or no. Would you have voted for him? That should be easy yes or no. It's a thing. Would you yeah, if it's between Biden and Trump, and it, and those were my only two options. Of course, I was going to vote for Biden okay. against Thank Trump. Thank you. Of Great. Cool. Okay. And, and, and Joe, please. Let, let me let, let me let me jump in real quick. Just speaking for myself, you know, I, I'm not a Democrat. I'm I'm a never Trumper. I I would vote for Joe Biden if Joe Biden were 151 years old and couldn't get out of bed. If he were running against Donald Trump, if Joe Biden stays the nominee. I'm going to run through a fucking wall to help get Joe Biden elected. Destiny, that's where I am, and that's where I've always been. All I'm interested in is, and, and this is a difficult spot, let's be real, because Democratic voters in a primary process selected him. I believe in that process. I'm appealing to, I'm appealing to Joe Biden because I think it's clear Joe Biden had only one issue he had to prove. He had one problem. Uh, is he too old for this job? And if he could prove he wasn't too old, I think Biden would beat Trump. He didn't prove that the other night. In fact, he failed. So my fear now is he can't beat Trump. And so I'm appealing to him to step down and hand it to Kamala Harris. And away we go. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Stephen, ahead. this is a question I want to ask you because this is I really respect your opinion, and like maybe you have a better answer for this than one I've been able to come up with. You know, we're not just talking; we're almost talking about two questions here. It's like who can beat Donald Trump, but the other question is like someone actually has to be president. And something that's happened since the debate is we've seen a lot of clips of Biden back in 2020. He is markedly worse today than he was four years ago. You know, here are the situations we have. It's not just Israel. There's a very good chance uh, China is going to attack Taiwan in the next year or two. You have the Middle East that's still destabilizing. And, you know, Biden, to his credit, has talked about his work bringing together coalitions in the international community, which requires a lot of travel. Can you genuinely say you're confident Biden will be able to do the job of president four years from now? Because I, I can't. And I look at my Twitter and me questioning Trump's mental fitness for his entire presidency. I have to apply that same standard to Biden. And I'm just honestly finding it very lacking. So if, if we were running 2024 Biden against 2020 Biden, I would vote for 2020 sure. Biden every time, but we're not. Sure. It, it's Biden versus Trump. And then the question is, who's the best candidate that we can put up versus Trump? For questions of what happened after the election, if Biden wins, and for some reason he has um, so much cognitive decline that he can't run the country, I guess I would hope that he would step down or somebody would, you know, do an amendment challenge to remove from office. But that's not really the question before us right now. I agree. Um, the interesting question is from all the people. Also, to be clear, I don't have um, I, for some reason, I don't know why Chink phrases this way, like a fear of power or a deference to the institution of the DNC. Uh, I don't really care about any of these things. The, the challenge is, is which candidate do you put up that we that 
we're in very uncharted territory when we, when we talk about swapping candidates this close to the election. And I think that people are a little bit too reliant on, they'll find a good poll and they'll be like, oh my God, we could run you know, uh, you know, Kamala Harris or Michelle Obama or you know, whoever else. And it's like, man, there were polls that had, uh, again, there were polls that had Hillary Clinton up like almost 15 points um, after, the, after the last debate that she did with Trump. And then, I mean, need I remind anybody that you have these shining star governors, okay, uh, Cuomo, DeSantis, who are like, oh, these are gonna be like the new guard of the parties. And these people, Cuomo was destroyed almost immediately by scandals from his past. And DeSantis was destroyed as soon as he opened his mouth to talk to a potential voter. So the only thing that scares me is when people are so quick and keen to you know, put another candidate out there, it's like, man, this is an untested candidate in a national field for the most important election ever, and the only thing we're going to hear about for the next three months are anything this person has done wrong, that's just a really scary world for me to be in, maybe even more scary than a bad Biden debate performance. I Responses. I, and so, by the way, just quickly, uh, Brianna, I appreciate your point about Biden being able to actually govern if he were elected for another four years, but I agree with Destiny on this point. I don't give a damn about that. Yeah. All I care about is who can beat Trump and keep Trump out of the White House. If Biden beat him and Biden stayed in the White House and he could only be president for a year, well, then, heck, he has a vice president who will become president. I don't care about that. I care only about keeping Trump out of the White House. OK, I want to pass it to Cenk. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Jenk. He has some things to say. Go ahead. Yeah. Eighty percent of the country think that thinks that Joe Biden is not mentally healthy enough to serve. You're going to run that guy. Do you know what that means? That means eight out of 10 people in America think that his brain is not functioning well enough to be president. To think that that's our strongest candidate is just mental. Can I ask? Totally, utterly mental. Sure. Can I mean, I... it's an alternate reality. It's blue MAGA. It's blue MAGA on steroids. Eight out of 10 Americans think that his brain isn't working. I mean, let's, and we're going to run that guy? Why don't you just say, I love Trump and I want Trump to win? Because that's what Trump's saying. That's what MAGA's saying. Go look at social media. They're like, please keep Biden in. I'm begging you keep Biden in. So it's this idea of devil we know versus devil we don't know. But look at this conversation you guys are having. So, like, can Biden finish four years? And you guys are saying, ah, who cares? But you're not going to win an election by saying, yeah, our, our guy probably can't even finish four years. But who cares? Vote for him anyway. That is not a winning strategy. That is an obviously disastrous strategy. I just ca I cannot believe that anyone's making that point. Guys, think about the convention. If Joe Biden's still the candidate by then, when they chant four more years, four more years, everybody's going to be embarrassed. They're going to the Biden team's going to be like, Shh, you're reminding that we everybody that we have four more years with this guy. There's no chance in the world that America is going to put in a guy into the Oval Office when they don't think his brain is working. So I mean, who's the alternative? It's already over. Let's pack it up. Who's, who's the alternative then? Easy. Oh, that's easy. So that's easy. Let me explain. So, yeah, it is. It's easy on two fronts. Number one, this whole fear mongering about, hey, what if the other guy is even worse than a guy whose brain doesn't function? You don't think there's a single person in the Democratic Party who has a brain that's functioning? Of course there is. Of course there is. Okay, so now the process. The process is just like it's always been until 1972. The delegates go and they vote in an open convention. What's the big deal? Are oh, my God. It'll be. It, hold on. Hold on. It'll be a mess. Mess how? Oh, my God. You'll have all of the whole country listening to a bunch of Democratic politicians defend democratic policies and get billions of dollars in free media to democratic politicians and democratic policies how is that bad if i That's terrific sure so we should have another thing, primary there go, last thing on that so once you go through that process the person who won the most number of delegates is likely to be your strongest candidate. That's the whole point of the convention process. So why don't we go with the strongest instead of the weakest? So if I relatively yeah. easy things to decide. If I may interrogate that for a moment, uh, Jenk, uh, when you say that the convention should decide, uh, do you not fear or worry that that will be seen as an undemocratic process where the no! DNC elites are just simply picking who they want, anointing them? No, no. That, 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 Go ahead, Cenk. That's the very definition of, of how these parties work. Remember, 
None of this happens if Joe Biden doesn't say I'm not running. If Joe Biden says I'm no longer running, then there's a process to pick a nominee. But don't you yeah. worry to, to Walsh real quick, uh, Congressman. Yeah. Uh, back in 76, uh, Reagan made a challenge on the convention floor uh, despite the person not not running. Right. So it, do not worry that even if Biden says I'm still going to run, that there won't be some challenges from uh, contenders during the convention. Oh, you, if, if Biden says he's going to run. Yes, he's going. I'm going to. I'm oh, still no, running. No, no, no. If, you don't if think Biden anyone will challenge him. him. No, I believe if Biden stays in, there will be zero challenge at the convention. And by the way, if Biden steps down, hopefully, I think, as Cenk said, there will be a raucous, divisive uh, a convention. But my God, we live in unprecedented times. This is exciting. This is we're going through something. I mean, embrace this. It's different. Okay, Cenk wanted to yeah. get in and then I'll. Pass it to the rest. Yeah, I, I mean, look, guys. Uh, first of all, uh, all these things about like, oh, by back in '76, uh, you know, uh, Reagan hurt uh, the chances of the party, and Kennedy hurt the chances of the party when he ran against Carter, and all this nonsense, right? Okay, so wait a minute. Were they running against the guy that eight out of ten Americans thought uh, that person's brain had stopped functioning? Of course not. It's like that Fleischman clown that's going around. I predict I have the 13 points. Yeah, but brother, the 14th point is, is the guy's mind working or not? Eight out of 10, it doesn't, and guys, it doesn't matter what we think on this panel. The jury's in. Eight out of 10 Americans say not mentally healthy enough. Good night, Irene. It's already over. So the only question is, is can the Democrats miraculously resuscitate a campaign to give Trump a challenge. And the way that, to do that is already built into the process of the convention. And, and this whole idea that, oh, it'll be divisive. So what? That's great. So, like, That's so, great. Like, so you're gonna have different Democrats saying, hey, I want higher wages. No, I want higher wages for the average American. No, I want uh, tons of health care for the average American. No, I want universal health care. These are all great things. I mean, well, look and, at 2016, and, and, one last thing. Look at yeah. 2016. When the Republicans had a mess and it was super chaotic, and they were talking about penis size and all this craziness, <laughs> and they won, and they well, won. And, and, and look, look, I'm I'm the only I think former Republican on the panel. I was a Republican congressman, a Republican candidate for president. I was a Republican for my whole life. My former political party has become a cult, right? Like they don't there 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 is never any public questioning of the fitness of their leader. I think what the Democratic Party is going through right now is healthy. And if they went through a really raucous convention, if Biden stepped down, that would be healthy. But I, I need to back up for just a second because, Destiny, I, I want to appreciate your I want to understand and appreciate why at this point you still think Biden would be the strongest candidate. Help me with that. Uh, I mean, he can run on his record. If we have a new candidate that's in, you have no record that you can run upon anymore. Um, he beat Trump once in an election. How relevant that is to the next one is, I guess it's hard to say. Um, but those are two things that are now completely tossed if you start running a new candidate. Um, another factor is that, you know, Cenk keeps saying over and over again, like eight out of 10, what, yeah. Wait, 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 real quick, Cenk keeps saying like eight out of 10 Americans don't think that, uh, you know, his brain is working, blah, blah, blah. That's fine, but the polls don't reflect that. Um, I mean, look at the popularity that Donald Trump enjoys and they don't even care if his brain is working or not, right? We're told over and over again to take him seriously, not literally, like they make excuses for him not even be able to speak, <laughs> which, uh, you know, he stumbles through a ton. Um, so yeah, I, again, I'm not like allegiant to Biden, but the idea of just throwing a whole new candidate up and the idea like, oh no, the primary process will produce something so good and we'll all unite around that candidate in a big kumbaya afterwards. I totally don't see that happening. So can I jump in on that? Because I agree with Stephen on multiple points here. A, the compliance stuff is something we are really not examining enough. Uh, you know, Joe, you know this veteran, anyone here, you know, all those donations, they could go to Kamala Harris. But, uh, you know, even if Biden starts a super PAC, uh, you know, it can't coordinate with campaigns. So, you know, Stephen, you know better than anyone, the individual can go out there, get the data, run your own canvassing operation. But I think it will obviously be diminished 
finished if it cannot coordinate, right? It can put out ads, it can do all that stuff. That's going to be difficult. Another thing that I think, respectfully, Jank, you're discounting a little bit is the media has not really dug in on any of these other candidates that we have and really vetted them. And every single one of them has some liabilities that we need to think about. You know, as far as uh, Gavin Newsom, who's married to Kimberly Guilfoy, I don't even want to imagine <laughs> what stuff is going to come out with that. You know, Kamala Harris, the right-wing media has decided she's kind of this dim-witted uh, aunt, uh, you know, once they go into full attack mode on her, you know, is going to be a white supremacist running against a, a black woman, right? Uh, you, know, you look at Raphael Warnock, you know, there's some stuff there they can go after. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea necessarily. I'm saying as we're figuring out our, our calculus of who is the strongest candidate, it is just simply true that we know where the bottom is with Biden, and I'm less certain of where that is with uh, these other candidates. And that money challenge is not, it's not a minor thing. So what I need to see moving forward is I need to see Biden with his head less stuck in the sand with a credible plan to turn around this huge deficit that he's got. Because uh, on the course we're on, he's not going to win. And if we keep this playbook that he was using last night, we are going to fail. And it's not just Biden that's going to fail. We're going to lose Senate Democrats. We're going to lose the House. And we're going to lose local races. But I also need to see if we do replace him, I need to see a credible plan to bring up that fundraising, build new field offices. Like, whatever we do, we need to figure it out quick. I, I, I actually think, and, and Cenk and I may disagree on this, I, I, I think Kamala Harris would have to be the nominee. And by the way, Brianna, Kamala Harris would get all of that money. Let's remember something. It's not the Joe Biden reelection campaign. That's this, right. is the, this is the Biden-Harris reelection campaign. Sure. If the president of the United States says, I can't do it, I won't do it, Biden picked her four years ago. Biden was going to be the bridge. Biden has to embrace her and sure. endorse her. And in a weird way, maybe I'm shooting my own argument here, Destiny, I really don't believe it. It almost doesn't matter who the Democratic nominee is. I believe there are more people in this country who oppose Trump than support him. I, I, so in, in a way, I think if you put Kamala Harris up there, I think this coalition of Tea Party, never Trumpers like me, all the way to progressives, I think we're going to get enthused and we're all going to get behind who that candidate is. I, as a quick thing on that, I actually think I agree with you. Uh, you know, like famously, people refer to polling where if you have a generic Democrat versus Trump, he outpolls everybody until you start putting names in. If you could find me somewhere in the country, a Democrat who steps out of a clone machine, who is 50 years old with absolutely no history on planet Earth, and then he runs and there's nothing to dig into, then I'd say, you know what, maybe we run that guy. But it's just, even if there are like minor scandals or minor issues, I could just see people fixating so heavily because we only have a few months to the election on whatever thing comes up and that becomes the new talking point. So in my mind, Biden is essentially that generic guy to some extent. He just has to not be buried by the cognitive decline. But other than that, like his incumbency, his record, like these things are so strong. And the fact that he's already beaten Trump in an election one time before are strong things to lean on, you know. In terms of right, that. but that's why, that's why, and then I'll give it to Chank. That's why Chank's point is so important. Biden's problem now is he's unfit. So many Americans now believe because of his age, he's unfit. This campaign has to be Trump's unfitness. Biden almost now has negated that, and I don't see how he gets it back. That's, that's not just a, a, he's got one skeleton in his closet or he's bad in his, on an issue. This is like humongous, and I don't know how he gets over it. I'm going to give it to Cenk real quick, but after I do, I have a question both for Destiny and for uh, the other side here. Um, so, Cenk, if you have some responses to what's been said, I'm going to give you the floor, but then I, wa I want to be able to ask my question, maybe move this along a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a lot of responses. So first of all, uh, I want to double down on what Brianna said on the dangers here. Uh, at this point, it would be a landslide win for Donald Trump. He's into the non-swing states, you know, the 
poll that the Democrats accidentally leaked shows Biden losing three non-swing states and in the danger of losing six non-swing states. So he a down ballot will be disastrous. That's why Congress is panicking as we speak now. So if things go as they are, the Democrats will hand Trump Congress easily, all of Congress, and a mandate. There is no scenario that is worse than that. So right now, we're at a zero. We can only go up. So I need people to stop believing in the hypnosis that Joe Biden has any chance of winning. Because that if you think that he has a 45% chance of winning, oh my God, I'm a little worried he's off by 5%, you're going to make the wrong decision. He has a near 0% chance of winning. So Destiny, you say, hey, 80% of the country, you acknowledge that he thinks uh, they are worried about his mental health, but you say it's not showing up in the polls. But brother, it is. Because uh, as you guys are showing here, now I think at least two people, maybe four, up to four or five people on this call have said that, hey, if Biden is like brain dead, you'd still rather vote for him. Well, that speaks for at least a third of the country. So where the election is being held is with independents that are in the middle. And Biden has now lost way too many of them. He's not going to lose blue MAGA. Trump's not going to lose red MAGA. But there's a big number in the middle. And now they have swung massively towards Trump in a way that is unrecoverable. That is why, in effect, he's down by 11 in the New York Times poll. And his favorability is so disastrous. Again, it's literally never been done before by an incumbent to come back from this far behind. So when you talk about vetting the candidates, look, I'm not... It, Pollyannish, it, will there be things that come up? Of course, but that's very, very normal politics. So, so I don't, for example, Kamala Harris, I don't think she's a good candidate at all. I think the idea of anointing her is preposterous. So you're right, Joe, I don't agree with that at all. And, but on the other hand, if she wins in an open convention and she would be the favorite to win in an open convention since she's part of the Biden Harris team, and she earned it, and it makes her stronger. It makes her more credible. So we should go through the process that exists instead of doing the same mistake the Democratic Party does every single time. We are anointing a leader because we are geniuses at the DNC. We're super smart. We're the ones who picked Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden in 2020. Hold on, wait, wait. Can you justify that? What do you mean? You keep saying anointing a leader. Hillary Clinton won the primary. Joe Biden won the primary. What is the anointment we're talking about? Yeah, so yeah, easy to answer. In 2016, they don't, the DNC doesn't say, hey, I'm not, although in 2024 they did, and I'll get to that in a second. Hey, I'm not having an election. They Instead, they do things like, oh, let's plan the smallest number of debates, morons. You gave up hundreds of millions of dollars in free media coverage. The Republicans swooped in and had a ton of debates, got all that free media coverage and used it to win. And they put the debates up against football games late at night, et cetera. So that's a small part of it. Another part of it is that they laundered money, and this is a proven fact, through the uh, state parties, the giant rich donors basically cheated and got the money to go to the DNC and then to the, uh, not the DNC, but the Democratic state parties, and then go to Hillary Clinton. That was favoring one candidate over another. And of course, the the we're not even talking about the 800-pound gorilla in the room, which is mainstream media. Corporate media loves corporate yeah, Democrats bah, 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 like bah, bah, Biden bah, bah, and Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like none of this. So yeah, this is, no, no, this is all, just That's to be clear, this is all. Okay, hold on, 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 hold Oh, the DNC cheating for corporate Democrats is great. It's wonderful. The wonderful, wonderful. They should so tilt on scale. Yeah, lead on the scale. We don't want a populist who's had a 12-point lead against Donald Trump. We don't want to win because you know that they think that an economic populist is way more dangerous. Who's than the Trump economic populist with a 12-point lead to Donald Trump? Trump? So in 2024, what Thank do they you. do? I know because I was in the primary. They're like, oh, the Florida primary canceled. Biden is unilaterally the candidate from Florida. Uh, in North Carolina and Tennessee, there's a sitting U.S. congressman in the primary. They're like, yeah, I don't care. We're not going to put anyone on the ballot because they cheat, cheat, cheat in every way. They hate democracy. Okay. And it's so ironic that their uh, tagline for this election is protect democracy as the DNC has stomped it out everywhere they could find it. And that is why they pick loser, super weak candidates because they do this dumbass anointing instead of just let, having a fair contest where everybody can vote and and have a fair shot at it jake just real quick uh do you throw your name in the ring when it comes to the democratic no, convention no, no, so no that's a really out? important question wait am i able to respond oh, to my simple question that he answered can i can i ask the question so 
so the reason I ran in the primary was because I accurately assessed that Joe Biden had no chance of winning. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, I wait apologies for all the people who were wrong and said, oh, no, you're ridiculous. Joe Biden has a great chance of winning. Oops, oops, okay? So I ran to desperately to get someone else in the race. I said it on the first day that I announced my campaign and I said it throughout. Let's go, if we could somehow rattle this race enough, the Democratic governors will come in. Look at Andy Bashir. he's sitting in Kentucky. In Kentucky, he won twice. He has a really good track record. He, Shapiro has a good track record in Pennsylvania. Whitmer would almost guarantee Michigan. Why don't we take a much higher chance of beating Donald Trump instead of a 0% chance of beating Donald Trump. Okay, I want to pass it to Destiny. He said he wanted to, to answer Yeah, sorry, that. I shouldn't have asked that question. My bad. So it is a democratic process that turns out our candidates, and that's where these candidates have come from. Um, I think that people speak in thinly veiled, unhappy tones about who the candidate is because they <clears> prefer <throat> their particular populist or their particular progressive because they think if we just put him on the general, even though he gets destroyed in the primary, somehow he's going to win the general election. And if you look at these hypothetical polls where they put up a candidate who has uh, not even been nationally tested against the current guy who's on the other ballot, he would have won a ton, but that's just not true. If we're going to talk about an anointing process and we're going to say that Hillary Clinton was the one who was chosen, why did Obama beat her? Obama, uh, unless Obama magically became the anointed candidate uh, in 2008, but in that case, why couldn't Bernie Sanders have become the anointed candidate when voters started to prefer him? It's because exactly progressives right. and populists are not popular on the Democratic side. Thank God. Ah. Okay. They are not popular on the Democratic side. And also the idea of somebody talking, uh, you know, about like, oh, these candidates are, you know, the Democratic Party is stealing the election because they're not willing to primary their own candidate. Candidate. I'm sorry, where were the Republicans' pr primaries um, against Donald Trump um, w w when he was running for re-election? You just don't primary your, your candidate. There's nothing undemocratic that about that. And deciding when you want to hold debates and not, you know, taking seriously every single, you know, one percentage point polling candidate seriously and hosting debates and wasting money and wasting airtime and coverage and all this stuff, it's just not feasible. Like, the parties want to win. They should want to win. We want them to win if you support the party, or at least what the party stands for. So all of that makes sense. None of that is undemocratic. Nothing was undemocratic about Bernie or any populace losing the elections. These are the results that our system, for better or for worse, have given us in as democratic a manner as they could reasonably do. Response? Yeah, just to be clear, nobody's pulling a MAGA and saying they cheated on the votes. Nobody cheated on the votes, okay? But not acknowledging the fact that mainstream media, in other words, corporate media, absolutely loves Hillary Clinton. They loved Joe Biden until a week ago. They loved Barack Obama, and they despise every progressive. Why? Because we're against corporate power. Wow, it's that's because really they're not popular. Wow, mainstream media likes popular candidates? That's no, unbelievable. <laughs> No, 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 no. Mainstream media loves corporate uh, politicians like you do. You think that corporate donations are awesome and we should live under corporate rule. Yay. Right. But the reality is that's how they skew the, in, the voting base and they get older people who watch cable news to go, oh, my God, uh, they said Bernie Sanders is going to lose, even though Bernie Sanders is a much lead, high, bigger lead against Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton did in every poll for a year straight. Mainstream media 100 percent lied about that to make sure that Hillary Clinton won. Okay. And then you go, oh, yeah, that's a fair contest when we have the entire media on our side. Sure, you can pretend anything you like. Okay. I well, wanna... the entire media was against Donald Trump, and he still won his election. So, I mean, like, what is it? Does the media, you know, pick the candidate, or is it sometimes they help, and sometimes wait, wait, they hurt him? But trying to hurt, like, look at your arguments. Look at your arguments. You said, uh, so we acknowledge 2016 Republicans had a chaotic, total mess of a primary, and they won. And you said, oh, but look, they didn't uh, primary Donald Trump in 2020. You're right, and they lost. Oh, and they didn't have a chaotic mess of a primary. Wait, wait how did they have a chaotic mess of a primary in 2016? Down the primary. They didn't have a chaotic, they didn't have, they did not have a chaotic primary. They followed the process. They did it. There was a lot of crazy shit said. You thought that Republican primaries were just normal? Like, yeah, they, they were. were. Yeah, they had, they, they, they say crazy shit. The Welcome. I, who, a primary is supposed to be divisive. Excuse me. Do you remember I Obama wait. versus Hillary? You don't think that primary was one of the most divisive of all time? What are you talking about? Yes. And we won! Destiny, you're making my point for me. I Every absolutely, time, I don't know if you know what your point on, is. Hold on, hold on. Every time we have a mess of a primary that's contested and that's relatively fair, that side wins. Literally every time.
Okay, I want to <laughs> rein this in a little bit, bring this back to the topic at hand just so, a smidge. I, can I uh, jump in quick? I actually, really I, quick, I, but I, I do I have some questions. Back. Go this ahead, brings Brianna. me to a really good point that I want to talk about with this, which is I think it's a, a risk that all of us are kind of underestimating, right? Which is this is going to be so divisive for the party if we do this, no matter which way it goes. You've got, um, so if it goes to an open convention and Harris doesn't win, you're going to have uh, the people that are really mega supporters of her and the black community, which is the backbone of the Democratic Party, they are going to feel slighted. There are people out there, and, Jenk, uh, and Joe, I'm sure you've got them in your mentions. I'm sure they're texting you. I'm sure you've got friends calling you too, going, I thought you were smarter than this. Why are you betraying Biden? Like, you know, there are people that are going to be end of the world with Biden, and it is going to open up some serious rifts. So something I'm genuinely struggling with is this is not a time that we need another like inter-party fight. We need to pick a direction and get 100% behind that. So I, can you at least, like Jenk, can you acknowledge that that's a risk of opening up this no. huge risk? No, 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 no. Jenk, no. I'll set you up. Brianna, <laughs> I, Brianna, I love you. It's an opportunity. Look, we are living in a populist moment. We've been in a populist moment now for eight or nine years. Voters across the board are pissed off. Biden steps down, there's a fight, and you have a divisive convention. That, that, that's perfect for this moment. Voters want shit like this now. They, they don't want the status quo. Democrats have given, I agree with Chank on this, Democrats have given voters the status quo. It worked in 20 because Trump was such a madman. Uh, but you're not going to beat Trump this year with status quo. And if Biden stays in and tries to limp to the finish, that's status quo. So, yeah, if I if I may just interject with a question for, for both you, Joe, and uh, you, uh, Jenk, right? How come the, the, the polls, at least, aren't reflecting this narrative that you're spinning. So Bloomberg reported on a poll that was released just today where 60 percent of Democratic voters want Joe Biden to remain the candidate. He also shows trending in most swing states are trending back towards Biden. So where's the disconnect? Explain to me why we are not seeing the narrative that you're spinning in the data that I'm looking at. OK, no, no, that's a crazy framing of that question. Every what? poll shows Biden losing and losing by a lot. You're talking about a, a poll that came out this morning saying, oh, he stopped the bleeding. He's down in every swing state, but it's not as bad as it was right well, before Well, no, he's the up debate. in Michigan. He's up in Wisconsin in this poll. No. Okay, no, my bad. You're right. You're right. I just looked at it a second ago. Yeah. You're right. Michigan, Wisconsin, he's up. He's still losing in enough swing states. He's losing Pennsylvania by seven. Lose a Democratic candidate losing Pennsylvania by seven. In an earlier poll, he was losing Nevada by 12. So in this one, it's a, a lower number. So look, number one, I reject your framing completely. The number one problem we have with Joe Biden is that he's getting clobbered in the polls. Just because he stopped the bleeding a tiny bit for a minute doesn't mean that he's somehow back up. So that's totally wrong. Second of all, there is one thing that's going right for Joe Biden, and and maybe that's why this Bloomberg poll it could just be an outlier because it doesn't really match the it other polls. Be. There's not been but, a lot but, of polls that have come out since the debate. We are working on very yeah, little that, information. Okay, so the only thing going positive for Joe Biden is that older voters are starting to transition towards him. It used to be for Trump, and I, I you know there's a couple of reasons why it might be the case. The older voters are watch television more. Television is a brainwashing factory. Uh, for corporate politicians, but in this case, I'll take it if it's Biden versus Trump. Uh, the second reason is people might start to get annoyed. Like they keep calling him old. I'm old. I don't like it. Right. And so that might be going in this direction. And Biden is the status quo uh, candidate and older voters generally like the status quo. Now, having said all this, it's not anywhere near enough. It's not within a country mile of, of enough. And I also want to address the unity point. Unity supposed to be, oh, we're if you're unified, then it'll help us win. If it doesn't help us win, if it hurts us, if it keeps us from winning, what's the point of unity? And the reality is, as we've just discussed here and everyone has agreed, every time that a party has not been unified and had a divisive primary fight in the last 20 years, that party has won. So 
This idea that unity is this magical lofty goal and is wrong. And, and secondly, it's usually done by people who go, this is your candidate, shut up and unify. Okay, what if I said the same? What if I said back in uh, 2016, okay, Bernie Sanders is the candidate. Now you all have to unify. Do you not consider you know that what a, the rest a of the party divisive said primary? And say, hold on, hold on. You know what they said? No way, we're not unifying. No way, it's Bernie. Okay, well, then you don't believe in unity. Just well, because Bernie was never leading in the polls. Bernie never had a majority support the party. <laughs> oh, the minute someone has majority, like, okay, uh, the minute anyone has a uh, lead in the polls, that's it. Everybody's got to pack it up. Jamal Bowman had a huge lead in the polls before the who, race started. Who said that? I don't oh, think no, anybody I said that here. You're, you're, you, you remarked that we didn't no, unify behind Bernie Sanders. Unity. You're against well, unity. I can't no, believe you. Nobody, that. nobody you unified. Of Democrats. Nobody unified behind Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders never even had remotely close to majority support in the Democratic Party. That's why. I'm not saying that you have to That's drop it. There was a whole primary process. The primary process turned out candidates against him both times. Yeah. Okay. I fine. actually, I actually, Joe, to, please. to your question, to your question on polling, I disagree with my friend Chank. I, I think Biden was down slightly going into the debate. I think most of the polling is showing that uh, he's down a little bit more, but I don't think Biden can't win. And uh, this poll that came out, the Bloomberg poll today that came out was positive for Biden. If a few more polls come out in the next week that are relatively positive for Biden, that strengthens his case. I, I think a decision has to be made within a couple of weeks. And I think the polling on this is going to be key. Well, then let me ask you directly, Joe, um, sir. Uh, yeah. At what point do you change your mind? What do you need to see? What evidence needs to come out to show you that Biden would be that would change your mind on this and say, OK, I was wrong. Biden is now I, I'm riding with Biden once again. I'm getting back in that car. And we're going going for broke. It's, it's, it's a great question. I just want to provide a little nuance my mind, my mind changing. Like I'm all in with Biden. I'm all in with whoever the nominee is. I want to, I want to be clear with yeah, that. Yeah, sure. So if I see polling in the next week that says, oh my God, okay, this thing is still really tight. Uh, if I can see that, then that will give me a hell of a lot more confidence in Biden. <laughs> but to what Brianna said a few minutes ago, I need to see Biden out there unscripted doing yep. his thing, man. We need to see that in addition to some pretty good polling. Then I'll feel really good about it. OK, I, I um, agree. Yeah, with that. Can I just and, follow and, up on that? Real well, quick? I want to I want to let Brianna respond real quick and then we're going to pass it to you and then I have a question for Destiny. Go ahead. So, sorry, Jake. Well, actually, I wanted to ask uh, uh, Stephen a question. So, look. This is, I think Joe brings up a really good point. From here, uh, from everything I've seen, for us to get back to normal, for us to have a shot of winning the Electoral College, Biden has to change things enough to get, I think, 13 points more up in the polls. Now, some of that is in you know swing states like Michigan. What is the actual plan or what pathway do you see to Biden kind of changing this narrative? Because like what I saw in that interview last night was frankly just a very stubborn old man who thinks everything is fine. And yeah, we've seen this playbook before with, you know, uh, Dianne Feinstein, and we saw it with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, people that were just kind of a little tuned out to reality. So what is the concrete, what, what do you think happens with Biden for him to have a shift to get confidence from the American public and turn this around? I, I really need an answer to that. I don't think that populism is popular right now with the Democratic Party, but I think that populist messaging is important. Um, whoever does the debate coaching for Biden or speech coaching, the idea that he needs to be on stage rattling off 50 million figures, like he's a nervous, like high school yeah. debate speed person or whatever, that absolutely never needs to happen. Biden needs to find a few good quotes, a few good slogans, and just hammer them over and over and over again. I think that that gives him the best presence on stage rather than, you know, if, you, if you're if you asked about the economy, okay, you know, how, how do you think the economy did to your country? Like, instead of, uh, 45% of Americans had this and 72%. It should just, you know, literally be, you know, uh, my economy did better than Trump who cheated on his wife with a porn star. 
or my economy, you know, it's doing better than the guy who's got 34 felons, right? Like it should just be hammering stuff like that over and over and over again because it's quippy, it works, people like it. Nobody cares about the numbers on either side at this point. There's no reason to like have this huge fact-based like material analysis of everything. Nobody cares. Like most people's, in, 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 like even people's understandings of how the economy is doing sometimes goes back to just the news that they consume and the media that they're watching. And to try to play by this different rule set where Biden is supposed to quote like 52 different figures while Donald Trump thinks that invisible planes are actually invisible and there's literally no standard for his speaking or or his mental uh, capacity is is insane in my opinion that's and what so that at least for messaging I, I that's what I should focus on on that I agree, agree. agree with you and he was strongest I don't know if you remember John McCain's funeral I teared up then and I wasn't even a John McCain fan that much right like he's always been his strongest when he's talking emotionally but the core problem that I saw last night was he doesn't seem to think there's a problem. He's trapped in this thing, and I think Jenk has really put his finger on it, where, you know, he's in power. He seems to think the press is against him, and he's the enemy, and is the enemy. He, you know, took the uh, midterms, took credit for the midterms. I don't think the Democratic Party won the midterms. I thought it was women who are really, really pissed off about choice that got out there and rage voted and rage donated. Sure, so, but also, say, just a really yeah. quick thing. You keep saying that, like, he doesn't sure. think there's a problem. He clearly does. If you've he watched his so. speeches, yeah, he makes jokes of, like, he's joking about his age quite a bit now. I'm not 40 years old. Or I'm not what he's, yeah, obviously he knows it's a problem, but he's not going to go out and say it. It's like saying, it, it's like asking people that were still running for uh, president before they dropped out, like, oh, like, do you think you can win? Even if you're polling at 1%, you say, like, well, yeah, of course I think I can win. You're not going to say, oh, my chances are pretty bad. But I just not going to come out and say, like, yeah, I think a lot of Americans have an issue because a lot of people do seem to think that I'm in huge cognitive decline. Like, no, I wouldn't expect him to say that. He's been joking about it. He's clearly aware of it. Everyone around him is saying it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. To, uh, I believe Jenk wanted Can I some points. A bunch of those things? And, yeah. And then I want to, I have a question specifically for both Destiny and then I'll, a uh, question for you. So, but Jenk, yeah. you have some responses? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. First of all, actually, there is one candidate who did do that, Destiny. It was me. Uh, I was at 2% on the Quinnipiac poll, uh, which, by the way, not a lot of governors or senators got to, but, uh, and I was like, yeah, of course, this is not a, a, a recipe for likely success. And I explained to people why I was running, what the reasons was. But the most important part of that is that I was in the objective reality world, right? We, we, I could understand the current situation and I had different goals that I was going for. So now translate that over to Biden. In that interview, he did not look like he understood how far down he was at all. It's, he seemed to indicate a couple of times, even though he quoted polls wrong uh, from the New York Times, et cetera, but he said over and over again, those polls are wrong, those polls are wrong, and he seemed to indicate that he thought he was tied. He's not anywhere near tied. He's not within planets of tied. Why and, do you think he's saying that? No, 538 no, no, has him at 4951. That's not Jank, true. That's what, not wait, true. how far down do you think he is? We don't know that yet. We don't know that yet, Jenk. Okay, guys, look, uh, there's, on, the, there's the overall numbers, then there's the underlying numbers. In the overall numbers, he ranges from two to six down, and he's got to win by five. So he's seven to 11 down. That's just the reality, even in the best case scenario. Then there's the underlying numbers. You lost younger voters, you lost Latinos, your approval rating's at 36%, 80% of the country doesn't think your brain is working. In this circumstance, it is not a normal, oh, he's down two, he's up two. Golly gee, anything can happen. No, he has almost no chance of winning. And saying that a Democratic governor who is successful in Kentucky, Michigan, or Pennsylvania, has a lower chance than him is just totally unjustifiable. I you, think, you I think, I think, a let me, number of let me, points let me, by just picking one of those guys. I'll, uh, and, I'll, 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 I'll find some common ground here with all of us. I think my friend Chank overplays how down Biden is right now. And I agree with Destiny and Brianna. I don't think he's as down as Chank says, but I think Destiny underplays Biden's problem. And Chank is right. This this is unusual, guys. We haven't been here. Almost 80 percent of Americans do not believe Joe Biden is fit because he's too old. This is a real, real problem. Uh, it, it's not just like he's bad on an issue or he did bad pulling us out of Afghanistan or whatever. This goes to fitness for the job. In an election where Trump's fitness 
has to be the only issue. To to your yeah, side. I, I got to say the second half of what I was going to say. It's okay. related to what Joe said. Quickly. So and number then, yeah, one, he should have been out there do, after the debate. If he was healthy, if it was yeah. me and they were questioning my cognitive health, I would have done a dozen interviews by now. I might have done two dozen interviews by now. We're now nine mm -hmm. days later, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, this is crazy. And we just found out this morning that his team demanded that the radio stations that he did the interviews in ask them pre-scripted, ask him pre-scripted questions. Come on, if you can't handle a softball interview at a local radio station with someone who's friendly to you and you have to feed her the questions and demand that she ask them uh, in a scripted fashion, that means you're not the guy. That means your own team thinks you cannot handle a very normal interview. That means your own team thinks you can't actually conduct this campaign in a vigorous way and it's not even close. And even Joe Biden told the Democratic governors, hey, I'm done by 8 p.m. at night and now I realize that. So who's the president after 8 p.m.? And how are you gonna run a, ca a campaign when you can't go past eight o'clock at night? This is not anywhere near close. To say that a, a Democratic governor would not have a much, much, much higher chance than Joe Biden is just denying reality. Can, can I can I make one more real one more real quick, quick point? But then we got to go let quick, Destiny respond. That yeah. we'll all agree on. Three and a half years ago, for the first time in American history, a sitting president lost an election, refused to concede, refused to participate in the peaceful transfer of power, and then he tried to overthrow an American election and that guy is winning right now there's no yeah. way that guy should ever be winning against a Democratic candidate come on okay yeah. I want to pass yeah, but that guy that guy is not that. winning because people don't like Biden that guy is winning because oh. conservatives are insane i'm sorry oh, conservatives no, are no, crazy no, no, that no. is absolutely the case you're well i won't use the delusional word but like yes conservatives have lost their mind okay also when we're looking at like trying to win an election we're trying to turn out voters right it's not like we're trying to pull voters away from trump or that trump is pulling voters away from biden we're trying to turn out our own base and maybe sway a couple of independents in the middle um in terms of me Disagree. underplaying and in terms of me underplaying Biden's problems, I'm not saying that Biden doesn't have a problem. It's obviously a big problem. It is a severe problem. What I think is people are underplaying um, how difficult it might be to have another person step up and, you know, just be a, nom a, a presidential nominee and to be able to kind of like float through that, you know, just fine. Again, like you have these massively popular governors who everybody loved who were destroyed in months. I, I don't remember. I'm, I don't go back and check, but I think wasn't DeSantis on track to lose Florida in his primary process? And this is a guy who was popular in the whole uh, in Republican Party, who was doing like legislative moves as governor. So he's popular like legislatively, the support of the whole country, uh, the Republicans there, and he got eviscerated. Uh, it wasn't even close. He was like a laughing stock. So the idea that some Democrat can just waltz out, and then we also haven't spoken about this part much, uh, um, although uh, Representative Walsh, you know, has brought it up. If we do have a nominee for for, for both for political reasons and maybe for financial reasons, it might have to be Kamala Harris. And that's a conversation that I don't know, you know how Cenk feels about that, um, that Kamala Harris would probably have to be the nominee. The idea that you're going to primary um, and, and toss not just your president, but your whole ticket, uh, and you're going to turn your back on Kamala Harris, and then you're going to do a whole new thing. I don't know, even know if you could like, transfer the funds or how any of that would work. It would just be a whole shit show. And Again, uh, not to single out Jank, but there are a lot of people who are hypercritical of Biden who were, you guys are never going to vote for him anyway. Ever since the whole Israeli Gaza stuff, it was like, oh, I can't vote for this guy. He's pro genocide and I would never support this dude and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you guys are never going to vote for this dude anyway. Whether you're in a good or bad debate performance, it doesn't matter. And then we're talking about, like, you know, he mentally he's incompetent to serve. And then in the next breath, it's like, well, RFK, the guy who had literal brain worms, uh, you know, I would consider that guy. He makes a couple of strong arguments. It's like, I'm sorry, I don't take these arguments very seriously. I don't think they come from a place of good faith and I don't think they come from a place of wanting Democrats to actually win the, the party. I think it comes from a place for a lot of people of just wanting to kind of like slide in their candidate they think is secretly more popular than he actually is just because all the media has been against him. Hey, respond, yeah, please. It, it, I got to address that. So this is the number one talking point that people who like establishment Democrats say, which is if you dare disagree with leadership, who, by the way, has been disastrously wrong, as Joe Walsh just pointed out, they lost to Trump in 2016. They're about and they're getting their asses handed to them by Trump, a verifiable moron who barely makes it into double digits in IQ. They're losing to him again. But whenever you question leadership, they go, "Oh, you're on the other side. I bet you like Trump." 
okay, yeah, it's the oldest talking point in history. It's totally useless, especially in a situation like this where you're helping Trump more than anyone on the planet by insisting that Biden stay in the race when he has almost no chance of winning. So thank you for destroying what was a pernicious talking point throughout this entire last 10 years. Okay, so a question for uh, Brian. I didn't even say any of that, but okay, sorry. No, it's okay. Well, I, I probably No, every time you question the leader, you go, oh, how dare you? I bet you're, I question your allegiance. Okay. Who are you voting for? Oh, you guys didn't want him anyway. Oh, you don't want the Democrat anyway. Nonsense. Just because you cast, kiss corporate Democratic ass doesn't make you a better Democrat. Hold on, you it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the all of the media messaging, especially an alternative media, that's saying over and over again, I won't vote for Biden. I, if I were to go through the Young Turks, I were watching you and uh, Anna talk to each other, how many times have one of you said, I don't know if I could vote for Biden? I think you said, uh, if you're a Muslim in America, you shouldn't vote for Biden. I can understand why you wouldn't vote for Biden. What, like Trump I would do better would with, with Israel and Gaza than, than Biden would? Me. Like, come on, you guys have said this over and over and over again, the idea that you, don't, you wouldn't support Biden because, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I could do it because of the genocide, blah, blah, blah. I don't think this debate has, has made so a, Destiny, a significant your difference your point Biden. is, so Destiny, your main point is that you've been on the side of Israeli genocide and a guy with no brain who's definitely going to lose to Trump. Wow, great compelling argument. No, my point is, is I would always, if Bernie Sanders tomorrow somehow through an act of divine intervention became the nominee for the Democratic Party, I would have a Bernie sticker on every single thing I own because I would support the Democratic nominee regardless. No you guys have what, looked for a no billion, no, almost, almost no matter what. You guys have looked no. for a billion reasons, okay, to not support Biden, even knowing that it would be Biden against Trump. Whether oh, that means like considering third party reason. candidates who are insane, like RFK, or whether that just means constantly spending all, like so much undue media time shitting on Biden. It's like, oh, I don't know. I don't even know if I can support him at all, well, blah, blah, blah. Ass, yeah. That'll make it better. Kiss his ass. That'll make it better. Okay, 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 okay. Where the hell is kissing the moderator? His ass this this yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm getting in here. This entire time. Give, did it help? Control. Did it help? <laughs> All your ass kissing. Yeah, this is content, baby. Worst okay. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, okay no, I got to address what he's saying. Yeah. So he's saying, how dare you? You're in the news business. How dare you criticize the sitting president of the United States? I didn't say you that. You should be in the ass kissing business. And if you puckered up enough for him, his poll numbers Let me would be ask higher. my question. But you did it it addresses that. Times. Did it help his poll numbers? No. And he's saying, okay. oh, well, look, you, you, you can't criticize Joe Biden when he's in the middle of uh, helping Israel kill 37,000 people in Gaza. Well, 47,000? 60,000? One of the, 60, 000, 000, 000. One of the detriments right. to doing this in a group chat is I don't have a mute button anymore, but Sorry. we're going to go with what we got. <laughs> okay, so uh, a question to to Jank, to uh, Joe, uh, Congressman Walsh, and to Brianna Wu. Are you not worried that all this talk, right, uh, denigrating Biden, casting doubt on his uh, mental capacities, that it works as like a self-fulfilling prophecy, that the constant media narrative of he's unfit, he's unfit, he's unfit, will be worse than the debate in driving polls and end up into a situation where if Biden stays in, you have just given him a whole lot more baggage to go through. What uh, do you have any, do you think that's a real concern, first of all? And if you do, what ways have you tried to mitigate that concern? I want to go to Congressman Walsh first, and then I want to hear from everyone. Go ahead. And Brianna, I'll be brief. Uh, no, 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 I take don't. Your time. I, I don't at all worry about that. I think this is healthy, and maybe my opinion is skewed because of where I come from. I come from the Republican Party. I left that party because that party's become a cult. Because that party doesn't allow anyone to do this. And if you do this publicly, as they're winning, aren't they? You're, you're, you're no longer in the party. No, they're not winning. They're probably going to lose the House, and the Democrats are probably going to take the Senate. This is a really, really close election. So I don't think that's a negative. I think it's a positive. And I also think we are living in unprecedented times. I think we're living in a populist moment. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. So I think a lot of very unusual things are going to happen and I think the populace is ready for all of this. Go ahead, Brianna. So uh, before I answer the question, Wick, I just want to say one of the reasons Cenk is fun to work with is he's like this all the time. It doesn't matter what you're talking about or what you're working with. This is the level of passion that he has. So Cenk, I just, I, 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 he's like this all the time. 
It's great to see. Uh, so, Wick, I am obviously extremely, extremely, extremely worried about this. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, the Republicans have a trait where they, like, fall in line. And we just don't do that same thing. And I'm, I'm really, really worried that uh, I, I see the media doing this to an extent. And I want to be clear. I don't think it's, I, I have no issue with the New York Times asking tough questions. I thought uh, uh, George Stephanopoulos was fair the other time. But it really does feel like the media is in attack mode now. And for me as a public figure, I've certainly asked myself if I am doing more to hurt our chances uh, in November than I am helping. I just, I, I, I feel at the same time, you know, the, my friend Barry Weiss over at Free Press, she's written about this a lot, that, you know, it's like the media was telling one narrative and saying everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. And Biden had fewer press conferences than any other president in history. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't feel good about that. And then he wouldn't give interviews to the New York Times. And I'm like, oh, I really don't think that's really good. And then he has this debate. And every single American can go see that his faculties are not what they were in 2020. Uh, I assumed they weren't great, but it was so difficult to watch. So I, I just, I, I, I'm just really honestly torn. I don't know how to be helpful in this moment. Is giving okay. a helpful analysis helpful? Or should I be pretending there's no problem like a lot of my fellow Democrats are doing? I don't have an answer for that. I think it's good. I think it's good to be critical. I think there sure. are plenty of reasons to be critical of uh, Biden's really? mental faculty. That's yeah. Yes. I, yes. I think there are plenty of reasons to, and I have been. Um, but I mean, the, yeah. I mean, as it's been pointed out, like the coverage is insane. Uh, I don't know if there's been like a formal counting, but uh, the Supreme Court just gave the president like a massive amount of criminal immunity when he's performing powers as president. I, like, I feel like I've seen 10 times more articles, 10 times more discussion on the Biden debate performance uh, than I have about, like, that Supreme Court decision. Um, and the idea that this is, like, the obsessive talking about, again, is it a problem? Yeah, absolutely it is. Is it worth talking about? Yeah, absolutely it is. But, yeah, I think that these media cycles can definitely, to some extent, become self-fulfilling if you keep harping on it over and over and over again. But, I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to people in media to decide what they want to talk about. Okay. Uh, Jank, okay. Uh, go ahead. So, the court, the, the question goes to the core of the cancer within the Democratic Party, which is this idea that you're not supposed to question authority, you're not supposed to question leadership, you're not supposed to question the candidate. First of all, look at the assumption that people in media should only say good things about Biden. That's literally propaganda. So first off, I'm out. I, I, I'm in the news business. I'm not going to do propaganda. I'm going to tell you my honest opinion. Secondly, it so happens that strategically, that's the better way to go anyway, for two reasons. Number one, you're not hurting the party by questioning your candidate. You're trying to help him get to a better position. For example, he lost, Biden lost about 30 points with younger voters over Gaza. So criticizing him over Gaza helps him get to a position where he'll pick up more votes. Now, if the candidate says, no, I'm gonna constantly do the wrong thing, that makes me more and more unpopular, that's on the candidate. Democrats, please ask more of your candidates. Don't but, say, oh, that's okay, sure. we'll hold on. We'll build a wall of propaganda around him and we'll just demand that the media say nothing but positive things about him. And then that way we could protect incredibly weak candidates. But how to be about clear. instead, how about instead we challenge our candidates and our candidates are really strong and then they can make their case in a way that allows them to win elections. I've got more, but go ahead. Yeah, sure. You but, but to be clear, just to reiterate the question, we're not talking about criticism in general, but of his unfitness to be president, which is a fundamental different yeah, yeah. thing than criticizing yeah. him over Gaza or over yeah. the Afghanistan yeah. pullout or any of these other yeah. things, right? Okay. Well, yeah, guys, yeah, but hold on, hold on, hold on. The question ahead. is to me. Hold on. I mean, I got to ask you guys back. Do you, do you have eyes? Do you have ears? Are we going to sit here and think that if we pretend that he's not in mental decline, that we'll be able to trick the American people? Number one, I have no interest in tricking the American people. Two, I have no interest in leaving objective reality. He's in obvious, massive mental decline. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie under any circumstances to help this incredibly weak candidate. Instead, I'm going to be productive 
and I'm going to help try to drive him out so we can get a strong candidate who actually wants to beat Donald Trump. And guys, one more thing. When you do this type of propaganda, you lose credibility with independents who are going to decide this election. Earlier, Destiny said, oh, you're not going to get conservatives. Of course we're not going to get conservatives to vote for Joe Biden or any Democratic candidate. You're trying to win over independents. And every time you say preposterous things like, Biden's perfectly fine, he's a dynamo behind the scenes, you lose credibility with Who's, those has any, Wait, has anybody on this panel said so that? It's so hard to get it back. Wait, has oh. anybody on this panel said that? Biden's team said that repeatedly. Wait, wait, Biden's team is not in the room with us right now. I don't know why we're responding. No one here is defending that. No one here is defending that. Nobody here said that. I don't know why we're responding to this. You tell me. You're saying that Biden's the best candidate we have. Correct. So are you saying he's in obvious mental decline, but I'll take him anyway? Or And and he's better than every Democrat in the country, even though he's in obvious mental decline? Or are you denying that he's in mental decline? I don't see a candidate right now that is obviously and clearly a better candidate to run for president than him. No, hold on, Destiny, just to answer the question, right? Do you think yeah. that currently, right now, that uh, President Biden is fit to make decisions of a president, right? Like, uh, to, to actually I don't think he's shown any. I, he, obviously, he can't hold it up in a debate for sure. But like, does he have like obvious and clear mental decline where he can't make decisions for president? I haven't seen evidence of that. I know that his debate performance looked bad, but no, I don't know if I would go as far as to okay. say that. I agree with that. I agree with Destiny, by the way. I Look, um, I don't believe, I, I believe Joe Biden can still function and do his job, but I worry about him doing his job three or four years from now. Yeah. Um, look, look I, 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 again, I do we do Biden damage, you know, if we publicly plea with him to step down? I agree with Chank. That's not my job. I get paid to say what I believe. I want the best candidate possible to defeat Trump. But, but, if it is Biden, and if Biden can show it, and if Biden can prove it this next week or two, and if poll numbers can bolster him, then again, I'll run through a wall with Biden, even though I admit he's he, he's declined cognitively. If he's in a f- coma, I'll vote for him over Trump. So I acknowledge that. But the issue has to be Trump's unfitness. So I guess I'd, uh, to Jenk, a question to you then, right? Is there anything Biden can do or you can see any evidence, right, that can come out that would convince you to change your mind and throw your weight back in support of Biden as the Democratic nominee and potential president in 2024? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so easy. So he comes out and is an actual dynamo, does a ton of events, interviews, press conferences, he's hitting uh, questions out of the ballpark, uh, and and he goes into the next debate with Trump and eviscerates him and is strong and healthy and vibrant and makes a terrific case for the Democratic uh, policies, and he goes and he does the things right and from a foreign policy and domestic policy perspective and does logical things like putting out paid family leave for a vote, getting oh, a, a ceasefire in Gaza, all these things. Stop, Tank. <laughs> You went too far. Stop with the issues. We're just talking about his fitness, you. Now you and I are going to fight. Stop with the issues. So, I mean, look, I, these I'm are, back. I'm with go- Destiny. I'm back with Destiny. So if Biden okay. turns into Bernie Sanders, I would support him wholeheartedly. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Are you guys serious? I thought you were joking. No, serious. there's a way to win this election. You, no, like no, you but, but in- Chank, I'm serious. Even if you disagree with Biden on eight out of ten issues, if you believe he's generally fit to be president, you will vote for him over Donald Trump, correct? Yeah. So, guys, Thank I'm you. giving you two different things he can do to win the election. He, you, the question was, is there a way that I would support him? Yeah. If he does these dynamic things on the campaign trail and he makes a great case for himself on the Democratic Party, you'll see the poll numbers go up anyway. And then I'll say, hey, look, I thought it was unrecoverable, but I was wrong. I, I do that all the time because I'm a, I am live in the fact-based world. So if his poll numbers now exceed uh, Trump's in the swing states because he did a great job on the campaign trail, great. But the second thing he could do to not just get my vote, but to get everybody's vote. Guys, I'm not talking about like some sort of like socialist policies or something, paid family leave, polls at 84%. And he's not going to be able to get it passed now. But the very reason to introduce a policy like that is so you get 84% of the country on your side. This is elementary politics, but Joe Biden can't even do the simplest things that you need to do to win an election. That's why I'm against him. Go ahead, Brianna. 
Well, I was just going to say, so uh, it, this is, uh, I, I fear that like relitigating the Bernie Sanders stuff is not super productive. Um, so I, I wanted to talk about something else, though, this kind of related to what you were hinting at, Cenk, that I think is, is part of part of my calculus in trying to figure this out, which is uh, if Democrats are going to win this thing, there's no way for us to win that doesn't involve Michigan. And one of the values, I think, of if Kamala Harris took over or Gavin Newsom took over or if there was a, a change of leadership is, you know, it's essentially like you can kind of write off all this strife that's happened. Like, Stephen, you know my opinion on Israel versus Palestine. I've disagreed with Jenk on it many times. Uh, you know, like, that's how I feel about it. But it's impossible to say that there's not a rift in Michigan that's very, very real. And Hold I on, just as a quick thing, sure. any rift that you would try to remedy, regardless of what we think the policy positions are, okay, as sure. Jack said, we like to live in a fact-based world, the sure. vast majority of relevant voters who are who are old and go to the polls all are support Israel. Israel. Yes. So the 100%. idea that we're going to sit here and take some pro-ultra ceasefire, anti-Israeli, like super pro-Gaza stance just oh, for yeah. Michigan— well, like, is, is delusional, on. right? Yeah. I, I have contempt Ultra for those people, fire. too, okay. Stephen, 100%. But the polls, I've actually looked at Michigan very, very closely. There is, like, there is a large contingent of Muslim voters there. That's just a reality. And there is an antipathy there. We're not talking about fringe leftist, anti-electoral dipshits that are not going to vote no matter what. These are people that were with, uh, you know, they used to vote Republican uh, until the Bush era. Uh, then they switch sides and they've seen, uh, you know, actions that I personally support that Biden has taken in Gaza and they are really, really uh, not on board with it. And they're threatening to withhold their vote in this election. Yeah, I don't I think, I'm just saying that any change you make there to gain some voters in Michigan is going to destroy you with the rest of the electorate. So fair, even taking Agreed. that aside, there, there are a million different things. I think that all of a sudden, if we switch candidates, all this stuff that Biden has done or has not done. Oh, and becomes... to be clear, Brianna, just I'm sorry to actually can you. I finish my point, Wick? Actually, uh, so you know, then yeah. Biden, whoever replaces Biden, is a new story, right? The Democrats, whoever they are, have the youthful energy. And some of the polls I was looking at before this showed that everyone feels both candidates are too old. Everyone wants another alternative, which is why RFK is doing terrifyingly well in the polls. So I just think there's a practical reality in kind of saying, OK, if you don't like this, here's a new option. And part of why Obama was able to win is he very strategically did not get very deep on the policies that he actually believed in. We all imprinted what we wanted to see after the Bush years onto Obama, which is why it was so shocking when he didn't necessarily do all of that. So I think there's I think there's going to be an advantage. I think it resets the news cycle. I think we can move forward. I just want to ask you real quick, Brianna. Sure. Uh, so when you say a new candidate, uh, you do support uh, Harris as your favorite. If Biden does drop out, I just want to confirm that. Harris Hand to God, pick? Wick, I don't, I don't care. I, I don't am a care. Democratic Party operative. I will go with whoever the party wants. No preference? I just want to win. I, I literally don't have a preference. They no all preference. have upsides and downsides. I think the point Joe made about uh, being able to transfer the money in the war chest is non-trivial, but I think we could overcome it. Okay, fair enough. I, I guess okay. the— uh, Can I jump in with one please, thing there? Go ahead. Two things, actually. Uh, one is a point of clarification. Uh, I just want everybody to, in the audience to understand. Uh, the money can go into a super PAC, and that super PAC can spend it on any candidate. It does not have to go to Kamala Harris. So if it stays within the campaign, it goes to Kamala, but it can easily be transferred to a super PAC that could bring it to any candidate. Number two, uh, you know, it, there's this, like, discussion, the false discussion here as if I'm supporting Bernie Sanders for this uh, particular election. Look, I love Bernie, and I think he's right about all the things that we've dis discussed, but I'm under no illusion that a progressive is going to win in a convention. Those delegates are Biden delegates. And if you listen to what I've been saying in this debate, I've argued for Andy Bashir, the very, as far as I know, the very conservative Democrat out of Kentucky. I've argued for Whitmer Shapiro. None of these people are anywhere near Bernie Sanders. So I'm actually arguing for, and, and I, I my guess is that Bashir is more conservative than Kamala Harris, 
And I'd rather have Bashir. Why? Because he's more likely to win. This is not a debate between progressives versus the establishment. This is a debate between objective reality and people who don't believe in objective reality. As a quick, also just a quick fact on that, a super PAC by definition can't coordinate or like have any direct input from any of the candidates. So when we say that like all the money can be, um, yeah, I know in, in Jenks world where everything is rigged and, and illegal anyway, or whatever, it doesn't matter. But for the rest of us that do oh, live no, in the reality. Super PACs um, never, never do anything like that. You're right. Super PACs are totally innocent. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if all the money just goes from the Kamala campaign to the Super PAC, and the Super PAC is magically doing all these ads for one particular candidate, of course, nobody is going to have a vested interest in uncovering some kind of relationship there that isn't going to be the main primary talking point of probably you and the and the rest of the alternative left media for the rest of the election cycle. Super so PAC's you can have all you want. However, if you have money that is your campaign, you can coordinate directly. You can film ads with these people. You can spend the money on your campaign as you see fit. If that money goes to a Super PAC, do these people unofficially coordinate I in some think, ways behind I the think, scenes? Yeah, I they think. do, but they can at the same level. So that's, it's, it's I, ludicrous to announce that the money would be the same in a super PAC as it would for your own campaign. That's all I'm saying. I think, I think, I think practically uh, working around uh, the, a black female vice president would be a real problem for the Democratic Party. I agree with Cenk. I think Kamala Harris should be the nominee, but I agree with Cenk. I think have a mini open primary, as Clyburn suggested, at the convention, I think she'd win that, and I think that would strengthen her. Okay, a uh, couple of uh, on that note, right? If Kamala, if if you have this mini primary in the convention, Kamala doesn't win for whatever reason. Someone else, uh, Gavin Newsom, maybe I don't know, right? Uh, it doesn't matter. How worried are we about Heritage Foundation lawyers challenging ballots, right, and using quote unquote lawfare? against when we in the states right try to switch what names are on the ballots do we not think that's a a real concern at huge all? concern zero, zero huge concern. concern huge concern bridge this gap for me why <laughs> go ahead brianna uh, I just looked at this. Uh, you know, I've talked to friends that are working here. Ohio, there was a, a huge, uh, uh, you know, they used to have gentlemen's agreements that if you swapped out the candidate, uh, it would just be changed. Uh, then the Republicans were going to play hardball. Then it went back and they were going to allow us to have this process. Now it's not so sure. I think this is 100% uh, a fair concern. Imagine if in one of these swing states that we must win, if Republicans pull their tricks and it goes to the Supreme Court and they rig it so we can't be on the ballot. Of course, it's a huge concern. Yeah, no. Uh, so I don't agree. And the, and the reason is uh, twofold. Number one, Ohio was already resolved. Uh, thank God. Uh, the legislature uh, passed a bill and the governor signed a bill delaying uh, putting the candidate on the ballot in Ohio after the Democratic Convention. So that's already solved. Number two is overall, guys, uh, there's a Supreme Court decision about whether to keep Trump off the ballot in Colorado and Maine and other places. And the Supreme Court ruled nine nothing. Now you could say, I get it. Like you don't trust the courts and you think they're gonna, and I get, it's a slightly different issue. Obviously it was a 14th amendment issue, but, and the Republicans are gonna make up presumably a different issue, but whatever they're going to say is going to be made up. The Supreme Court would have to then go, yeah, we're disallowing Biden from the ballots, even though, or the new candidate from the ballots, even though we allowed Trump. It, I, I think the chances are almost none that they would do that. That would be the most outrageous stealing of an election that anybody has ever seen. And the court would lose all credibility and the country would be in utter chaos. So I think worrying about that is such a small percentage chance as opposed to the giant percentages we're going to pick up with a new candidate. Agreed. Let me, uh, I have some, as uh, a, just as a, I, I'm sorry, just as a quick thing, I'm sorry, just to, so, just as a matter of law, the reason why the um, 14th Amendment thing was tossed out was because the Supreme Court decided that states don't have the right to enforce that criteria that would have been only enforceable on a federal level, that states didn't have a right to apply Section 3 uh, of the 14th Amendment to their own ballot procedures. I don't know if that argument would further any case where a state says that due to their own internal state procedures, they won't list a ballot um, or they won't list a candidate on a ballot because of things that they've had that their state legislatures have approved of and that their state Supreme Courts have approved of. I think 
think that um, legally we're talking about two wildly different issues. So I don't know if the, the yeah I don't know if the holding opinion on that other case would be instructive for how they would treat states omitting some people from the ballot because they didn't make the deadline, which I believe historically has happened. If if a candidate doesn't make the deadline, the state doesn't list All them on the, the ballot. Just real quick, all the deadlines are past the Democratic convention, so I don't think there's any danger of that. Fair enough. Okay, uh, I have some audience questions that I, I think we should be getting into unless anyone has any um, threads that they'd like to go down that we have not yet in this discussion. I So I want to come back just super quickly, Wick. So to one of the ways I can see this going, Stephen, and let me know if you agree with this, as far as the war chest, so I, I think one of the ways this could work in our favor if we swapped out the candidate is you'd essentially have two parallel operations, right? So it's, can someone remind me how much does Biden have in his war chest? It's like Around 250, yeah, 250, something, something like, like that. that. <laughs> They've got offices, that's all set up. It's absolutely accurate that uh, if Biden were to convert that to a super PAC, it can't com uh, like work with the candidate. But I'm imagining almost a double democratic field operation going on where Biden's got this, he's got all this money in the bank. He can go out there, boom, rally the troops every single day. He's out there talking to people, working the crowds, getting them to go do it. And then whoever our candidate is, there's going to be a rush of fundraising. I think normal people in the middle, the ones that are tuned out of this election that just want another option, I think they are going to give very generously. And I think, I, I think it's going to be a lot of work to like build up field offices. I don't think the canvassing part of it is going to be that difficult, but you're essentially going to have two separate operations. And I could actually see this being a huge plus for us as far as our ground game, which is how we're going to win this thing. Let me let me, let me me jump in real quick. And yeah. that, that looks like Destiny wants to say something. Uh, again, I think we all underestimate the earthquake tsunami of news it would be the event it would be if Joe Biden said, I'm not running and the Democrats picked another nominee at their convention. Yep. Name ID would be through the roof. Money right. would pour in. Enthusiasm would come from sectors we haven't seen in so long. This instantly, this would be a race. It would ch fundamentally change the dynamic and money and everything would follow. This would be an earthquake, guys. Okay. So here, okay. So <clears throat> one thing that the party is probably considering, and that a lot of people, um, when you're dealing with it with a largely variable thing, uh, impossible considering, is volatility. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You would have to be an idiot to say that it is that it, you could pick a new candidate and it could cause such a resurgence of interest, of invigoration, of talking points, of debates, that having Kamala Harris, or even even if she got tossed, having a Newsom, literally, you know, dog walking Donald Trump on a debate stage would just be, it would just energize the voter base so much, right? These are things that could happen. There is, yeah. I wouldn't say any of these are outside the realm of possibility. The scary thing is the volatility. It's also not side, uh, not outside the realm of possibility that Kamala Harris, Harris gets chosen. It isn't exciting for a moment, uh, for for a moment in time, and then it's like, wait, she did what when she was the DA? They were arresting illegal immigrants. Wait, hold on, this was very immigrant. Wait, hold on, she did what for truancy? They want to lock our kids up? Aren't Democrats already attacking our children? Or like, or wait a second, we don't even trust the Democrats to be running their own uh, candidacy. Why is he dropping out now? This is a problem. Why didn't they choose him before? And now everybody's talking about the unreliability of the Democratic Party. I I thought you guys were making fun of uh, of House Republicans not being able to hold another majority speaker seat. You can't even be trusted to run your incumbent again. Like you guys are completely unreliable, right? So I, I like if you're being an honest actor, you can't say with any certainty what would happen if you were to put a new candidate up. That's the only thing that I stress. It could it be really good. It could be, but it could also be really bad. And right now, I don't think that Biden has slipped enough where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is done. Screw that. You know, if Biden started to like trail, if it was like double digit trailing nationally or even like big single digit trailing in like every single swing state, I'm like, man, what do you have to lose at this point? Yeah, let's go with the high volatility option. But if it still looks like he reasonably could win, and most projections have it that he still reasonably could win, right? The idea of tossing that for something so unpredictable that could be really good, but could also be really bad, um, is just a really scary prospect. Responses? Yeah. yeah so re re 
Re real quick. Uh, so first of all, I want to give credit to the panel because I thought it was going to be me and Brianna on one side and Destiny and Joe on the other side. But I like that we all have different independent uh, opinions. So that's great. I love that. I put together and the best panels, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and shout out to, to you as well, Wick. Thank you for doing that. And, and, and also to Destiny, because he's now basically three to one on Biden dropping out or staying in the race. And he's, you know, and I appreciate that. And I always want to make note, hey, it'll get a slightly skewed version because Destiny's on his own here. OK, now, having said that, the part that I disagree with is there's this fetish of the status quo. Oh, the status quo is higher percentage chance of being the right thing all the time. But that's not true. It depends. Is the status quo good or bad? And right now, the status quo is ranges from bad to disastrous for the Democratic Party. So under the idea that the status quo is always better and that you'll have volatility otherwise, you would run Feinstein again. And guys, I mean, I'm joking, except <laughs> they kept Feinstein in the entire time and told us she was fine, just like they're doing with Biden. So it's not like the Democratic Party hasn't done that. Is it better to get someone in new sometimes? Of course! And Destiny acknowledges that it is sometimes. So in this particular case, when you have Biden massively trailing by every indication, including some indications where it's literally never been done before in American history, or you go with a fresh candidate that has billions of dollars in free media coverage that will raise a ton of money and has won in like red states before or swing states before, I like our chances infinitely better by changing the status quo rather than keeping the status quo but, but, in a situation like this. But always, always remember this. To Destiny's point, Joe Biden won the Democratic primary. Democratic voters made him their nominee. All of this is moot if he doesn't say for the good of the country and to stop Donald Trump, I'm stepping down. He has to say that. Regardless of whether you think he should. I'm curious as to the panel's thoughts on whether he will. What are we thoughts? I think he, I think he, I'll start. I think he will say that within two weeks. Two weeks. That's the prediction. We're locking it in, Congressman. I'll, I'll come back to you in two weeks, and we'll see if your prediction's uh, accurate or not. Uh, any other thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah. I, Biden's definitely going to drop out. Uh, and there's two, two reasons why. Number one, because uh, he's going to have many more slip-ups, because he is in mental decline. And so he's going to do it again and again. And by the second or third time, it's going to be completely and utterly untenable. Uh, and besides which, uh, he's not going to make this miraculous comeback and get into the positives and favorability. It's a literally impossibility. So at some point, everybody's going to panic. But the number one reason is, uh, well, there's two giant reasons. Number one, the donors are turning off the faucet. And the only power that Joe Biden has is donor money. So without that power, he has nothing left. And number two, Republicans right now are running backbreaking ads against Democratic uh, congressmen and senators saying they knew about Joe Biden's condition and they lied for him. Can you trust Bob Casey if he lies about this? That's going to take down Democrats' numbers all across the board, two to five points at least. And it's going to absolutely destroy our chances of winning, winning swing states and purple districts. And at some point, there's going to be a massive rebellion. So my timeline is actually much shorter than Joe's. Uh, I, I've already said online, I think there's a chance he drops out by Monday. Uh, Monday there's going okay. to be a massive revolt in Congress. So in two days. So we got two weeks. We got two days. Thoughts on, on this, Brianna Wu? Regardless of whether you think he should, will he? And when? I don't feel as strongly. Um, I think I, I do have a, a hundred dollar bet, public bet with uh, uh, Robbie Suave, uh, my good friend, <laughs> Brianna Joy Gray's uh, former co-host over at Rising, that he's going to drop out. But I don't feel strongly. My evidence for that is everything I'm hearing from people on the Hill, uh, you know, friends at work for various campaigns, is there's a lot of discussions about the actual um, like legal frameworks of how it would work. Um, and you know, seeing Mark Warner come out and very strongly uh, say he's putting together a coalition of Senate Democrats that want him to uh, step down. To me, that signals that he and other Democrats are worried about uh, losing their races because we count on people showing up in election years for us. Joe, I'm sure you can testify Congress will do what they have to do, but ultimately they are self-serving critters and they're going to do what uh, helps them keep their jobs. So to me, that is the pressure 
sure that makes the most sense on this, but I would only say it's like 60, 40. I don't 60, feel 40. Certain. So not yeah. sure we got a, a, a maybe leans drop out, yep. but not sure. Destiny, 100%. what do you think? Whether you think he should or not, do you think he will? <clears throat> and do you have a timeline for us? I, so unless he has another huge yeah. up for a debate, like it just like completely messes a performance up or unless he starts to slide significantly in the polls, I don't think they'll pull him. It's just way too much volatility. Um, and, and I think another factor that's really scary that people haven't considered much is if you pull Biden and if you run another candidate, you might introduce a scenario where a whole bunch of people are starting to look and, and consider, OK, well, who's the next candidate? Who should I vote for? And RFK is a pretty popular dude. Uh, he, RFK has uh, probably pulled about as many uh, votes as you have off of Trump. But if now you've got a whole bunch of Democrats who are reconsidering their vote, man, if only like three or four points worth of Democrats are like, oh, okay, well, you know what? This is, I think I will vote for RFK. F that they might, you know, you only need a few percentage points to be able to tend in that direction. And now you've like completely lost it. Like I just, the, the volatility, I think is just so scary for all the potential things that could happen. Unless, like I said, Biden has a huge mess up in another performance or the poll numbers start to slide significantly. The slope slides both directions. So what if uh, our candidate is much better and a couple of people who were, who were supporting RFK I, Jr. because they thought Biden had mental health problems then come back up to the Democrats and we pick up two or three points. Hey, I don't think anybody that we nominate is going to pull anybody off of RFK, but I could be wrong. I don't hey, know. You had a hey, question? Hey, no, hey, half his supporters no, are yeah, former Democrats. I, I just... Uh, I'm uh, Chank's going to get mad at me because I have to go jump to get on corporate media in a minute and go jump <laughs> and go and, and go jump on the evil CNN. But I want, but Wick, I want to find some common ground among the four of us. Um, no matter what happens in a week or two or a month or a month and a half, uh, Brianna, Stephen, Cenk, and me, we are all in with the Democratic nominee, yep. is that no true? matter who that true. ends up being, correct? Yes. 100%. Yep, absolutely. I will donate money. One billion percent. I will. Grenade, coming bank, round, baby. Coming okay, okay, okay. I know you have to go, so I'm going to give you an out. Where can people find you, uh, Congressman? Just follow me on Twitter, at Wall Street. I, I, by the way, this has been great. You four have been, everybody's been wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you all. Have a great Thanks day. Thanks for joining us. And Thanks, Joe. Yeah, we'll see Bye, Thanks, you. guys. Okay. Okay. Um, if you will indulge okay. me, we do have some uh, audience questions. I don't know how much time you have. Um, is that okay? Just a little bit. Just yep. a little bit. We'll yep. get to the, the most expensive ones first. Okay, $50 from the eco-modernist to say very important topic. Thanks for the coverage. Our climate and energy future depends on the leader we elect in 2024. Thank you for the $50. Uh, $20 for Senk in, uh, for Jenk and Wu. Sorry, reading it, saying it. Okay. It's okay. Uh, why trust polls with all-time low response rates when Dems haven't lost ground in any actual election? MAGA has consistently underperformed polls and lost consistently since 2018. What is your explanation for this? I think it's a yeah. fair question. Oh, go ahead, Cenk. No, no, go ahead, Brianna. No, I was just going to say, I, uh, polls overwhelmingly, like we've ran into this in the the, the pack, Cenk and I run together, uh, which is, you know, polls are less reliable. You have to kind of interpret them. Uh, what I personally look for is signal uh, just in like the direction things are going. I think we have a difference of opinion. I think that uh, the person sending the super chat is thinking they can't be trusted. I attribute those victories to external forces, like I mentioned, uh, losing Roe earlier in this. Uh, so I'm just not as convinced uh, that that is meaningless. So that's kind of how I feel. Yeah. So in my experience, the sign that's losing always says the polls uh, aren't right. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Trump, in fact, at a recent rally was like, we don't like the fake polls. Uh, and he's like, well, we like him now. We didn't like him in 2020. And I'm like, yeah, there, there you go. Verbal diarrhea. He said what's actually on his mind and what every candidate always says, which is when the polls are having winning, they say polls are great. When they're losing, they say polls are BS and they don't believe him. Biden just said in that interview that apparently he doesn't believe in any polls. On the other hand, it's true that you got to get to the average of polls. You could have an outlier. Like, so for example, Nevada, uh, Biden's losing by 12 in one poll, but in the last poll, the Bloomberg poll that Wick uh, quoted, he's only losing by three. So what? which one is it? Well, when you have greater data sets, it, and it is actually science, it gets much closer to reality. And in my experience, are they perfect? Of course not. But are they generally accurate? Yes. So if you're, you know, pinning your hopes on every poll is wrong, 
That is definitely the wrong direction to go. You'll be terribly disappointed on election night. So much better to live in, again, the fact-based world and adjust to the facts rather than hoping that the facts are wrong. Okay. Uh, $10 from Doobie. Question for uh, Jenk. I agree with your read of the current situation. That being said, if Biden does not drop out and we're left with Biden versus Trump, would you encourage your viewers to vote for him? So this is what I do in, in, in every election. I wait to see how things are going early on. Uh, we're a news organization. We interview uh, all the independent candidates as well. And I've already interviewed uh, Joe Stein, Cornell West, RFK Jr. I know a lot of media says, don't. Don't let anyone ever hear about them. I don't agree. And and if they were to, and if there was a candidate in there that I really liked and they surged and they got into second place, now we're having a completely different conversation. But the re reality is at the end, it's usually the Democrat versus the Republican, right? And so now not all the time in our lifetimes, Ross Perot had a real shot at it, right? But I'm going to vote for the person who has the best chance of defeating Donald Trump. And if you're MAGA out there, or you're much more importantly, you're an independent out there and you're wondering why, the guy already tried a coup. He already said, I don't, I, I don't believe in this democracy. He already lost and said, I'm not giving up power. I'm going to pretend that I won the election. And he did a fake elector scheme. I cannot have that guy get back into power. The most important election is 2028. But we've got to get there and we've got to have that election. So I will definitely vote against Donald Trump and hence okay. against or the candidate that is doing the best against them on election day. Gotcha. And I'll tell my audience that's what I'm doing because I'm always honest with them. Wonderful. I'll get through these uh, rapid fire. They're just more like questaments than anything else. Uh, Normal America with Rob Noor says for $10, I like Wick and Destiny, but must call out them and Dems and their media. They all knew about Biden's declining mental health and gaslit for years. They should have never be trusted again on anything. Thank you for the $10, but... That's not true. Uh, Ten dollars from the Alex Kirsch Project. Many congratulations to Wick for this panel. Continue to support this fine gentleman. Jenk, always been a fan of TYT. Uh, Ten more dollars from Parallax. Ignore Rob. Good panel. Good guests. Okay. Uh, Five dollars from Testicle Johnson. I hear I'm hearing a lot of problems from Wu and Jenk, but not a lot of solutions. No alternative strat. No alternative candidate. Thanks for contributing. Any I response? don't think that's yeah. true. No, that's not remotely true. I love your brother, but. Listen to what we're saying. Go have an open convention. Have the delegates decide like they have for most of the conventions in American history. And then I'll support that candidate. And there's tons of great Democratic candidates. I'm actually in the camp that where I believe in the Democratic Party a lot more the, than I think the pro-Biden people do. I think we have candidates that are way better than Joe Biden. Again, Andy Bashir won in deep red state of Kentucky twice. On that alone, he's very, very, very likely to be a much better candidate than Joe Biden. And again, he's going to be way more conservative than I like in my policies. But we're trying to make sure there's an election in 2028. So let's get the strongest candidate there is. Whitmer is very likely stronger. Josh Shapiro is smart. By the way, J.B. Pritzker, not only stronger and fairly popular in Illinois. Now it's not a swing state. But he's got about a, you know, he's got several billion dollars that he could put into the race himself if he wants. So there's a lot of super strong candidates and that give us a much higher percentage of beating Trump. Okay. Why, hold on, just kidding. Why do you keep lying and saying most of the conventions in American history? It's incredibly abnormal to primary your own candidate. Why do, why do we keep saying, why do you keep alluding to that, that like most conventions are multiple people competing? It's, that's generally okay. not the case so, when, when you have your own all, incumbent, right? All right, I'm going to let go that you said lying. We're disagreeing over facts. So uh, most of the conventions were where delegates decided it until... 1972 and they changed the rules so until 1972 the delegates would go and sometimes like hubert humphrey didn't even run in the primaries and they selected him and now i like the new system better where the voters vote but in this case we obviously have a unusual situation where the primaries already happened but most of the democratic voters now realize oh my god or a giant chunk of them do oh my god this might not be the right guy but even that scenario is not relevant because the only scenario that's relevant is when joe if joe biden drops out and then at that point, like most of the conventions, we would let the delegates decide. So, pr so prior to the 70s, it was ordinary for parties to primary their president? No, wait, you're talking about two different things, Destiny. No, you're you said that it would be normal, it would be ordinary for or delegates, delegates to decide. decide. Yeah, but, but obviously if you have an incumbent and you're not running anybody against them, the delegates are probably going to decide to vote for your incumbent. So prior to the 70s, you're saying it was ordinary for delegates to make decisions of, of not their incumbent, that that was an ordinary thing? 
first of all, that's not what I said. I said that the delegates voting at the convention was incredibly ordinary. That's literally the rules, and that's a stone-cold fact. But if you want to change it to the question that you're asking, there were plenty of primaries, including the famous one in 1968, which would have been successful. It pushed out Lyndon Johnson. We had Bobby Kennedy as the candidate, and he almost certainly would have won, except that he got assassinated. So... But even in that convention, they voted for people that were in the primary, the people that weren't in the primary. And yes, they had a bold primary against a sitting, very unpopular president. And that president did the right thing. This president is not doing the right thing. Okay. $100 from Pondering Politics to ask this. Jenk, as the only journalist on the panel, how important is it to you to avoid creating slash contributing to false equivalencies between the parties and candidates. What about Destiny's point that disproportionate coverage at the expense of more important issues like SCOTUS? Yeah, but guys, you don't watch the Young Turks. We do cover that. And we kick the living crap out of Trump all the time. And we don't do it for propaganda reasons. We do it because he keeps saying crazy things. He keeps doing crazy things. And they're always in the news. And we... I mean, I don't know anybody who's been tougher on the Supreme Court than me. Their Citizens United decision destroyed this country. Even before that, their Bellotti and Buckley v. Vallejo decisions, activist justices uh, that are basically overturning our democracy. I wrote a whole book about it, Justice is Coming. So we cover all those issues. We cover foreign policy issues. We covered the labor victory in England, uh, in the UK, just yesterday. Uh, so... No, we cover it proportionally. In fact, if you were a MAGA viewer, you'd be like, that's not fair. You guys disproportionately cover the crazy things Trump is saying. No, it's not disproportionate. It's proportionate to what they're doing in the news. And for Trump, it's oftentimes crazy land. So if we were to go through your Twitter, for example, we would say you uh, denigrating MAGA, Trump, et cetera, about, about as much as you do Biden. Would that be a claim you'd make? So there are different platforms for different things. Okay. So for example, in YouTube community, that's basically our community. We communicate with them in, you know, in ways that they're familiar with, et cetera. I'm, and there, I'm not trying to reach journalists. I'm not trying to reach politicians, et cetera. So if you look at our YouTube channel of the videos that we do, that's our bread and butter. That's, you know, 90% of what we do. Uh, you will see that, yes, we are disproportionately against Trump and over the last now, starting in 2015, over the last nine years, I, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of videos we have made against Trump because he's earned it, right? If you look at Twitter, uh, I yes, over the scope of those same nine years, not close, massively anti-Trump. Recently, I'm saying that Biden is our worst candidate. That's hot in the news. Let's pick a stronger candidate. So if you look at it, you'll see a lot of things saying Biden's not the right candidate for the Democratic Party. And I think that makes sense, given that Twitter mo reaches journalists and politicians that can make a difference so that we have a better chance of beating Trump. OK, gang, I know I haven't gotten to all the Super Chats, but I want to make sure we respect everyone's time. I will read them after they go, but I want to give everyone here a chance to have a closing statement, final thoughts, and then to kind of, if they need to go, they, they got to go. I don't want to hold them hostage, right? Uh, <laughs> but um, if you've enjoyed this content, gang, we do talks like this all the time. Hit that like button if you haven't yet. Subscribe to the show. We got some great content coming up for you next week. But I want to hear some closing thoughts and from from all the the panelists here. And for pe tell people where they can find you if they don't know about you already. And I'll toss it first to Brianna, and then we'll end with Destiny. Go ahead, Brianna. I, I'll be super quick. You know, I just want to win this thing. I don't give a shit who our candidate is. You know, uh, Jenk, I love you. You're my friend. But one of the reasons I was, uh, you know, I was kind of silent when you were running for president. It was, you know, A, because I was running a pack and I couldn't uh, coordinate with you. But also, it's like, I just want to win. I'm terrified of Donald Trump. I'm terrified of what would happen at the Supreme Court. I just want to win this thing. I do not care. Uh, and a, a serious issue has been raised about Biden being able to win this thing. If we're going to continue with him, what I need to see from the party is a serious plan to turn this around. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, Biden basically hid for a week and then did a 22 minute interview does not spark joy with me. It does not give me confidence. So, you know, if we switch to a candidate, it is going to be a hell of a lot of work. 
You know, we are going to have to canvas, we're going to have to donate, we're going to have to give money, we are going to have to push back on bad narratives. It is going to be a free-for-all. So my final call on this panel tonight is no matter what happens in the next few weeks, we must win this thing, and I hope everyone will uh, work alongside me. Okay, thank you for being here. Where, where can people find you if they want to find you? <clears throat> Just look for me on Twitter. That's Brianna Wu. Great. Thank you for being here. really appreciate you. Of course. Jenk, Uger, please, final thoughts. Yeah. So first of all, people can find me at tyt.com, of course, but you could also see uh, Young Turks on almost any platform. Just type in Young Turks or TYT and obviously on YouTube under Young Turks as well. Uh, and so, uh, look, we uh, started talking about uh, how Joe Biden, and this is a topic that comes up often, Joe Biden won the last time around. That's a point that Destiny made earlier in the debate. But that's like saying the Patriots won four years ago, so they're going to win this time. No, it's a different team. And in this case, Joe Biden is a very different person. We ran clips of Joe Biden in 2020 and then 2024 on the show last night, 2016, and then you go back further. Joe Biden in the past has looked very dynamic. That is, This is not the same Joe Biden. He does not look dynamic. 80% of the country thinks that he's in mental decline. Uh, they did not think that back in 2020. And 2020, when he won, he won by 44,000 votes in three swing states. That's, even though he won a giant popular vote victory, the Electoral College, he barely won. And he was at 52% approval rating. Now he's 16 points lower. He's at 36% approval rating. No incumbent has ever won when they're in the 30s in an election year. So if you think that Joe Biden is going to do a miraculous 16-point comeback, okay, stick with Joe Biden and think that that's because you think that's the best chance that the Democratic Party is in defeating Trump. But I think that is very, very wrong. And unfortunately, this last week has proven me correct, as I've been saying that for nine months, because we all have eyes and ears. And most importantly, no matter what you think, you have to be concerned about what the American people think, because they're the ones voting. And they're showing it to you in the favorability rating, in the polling, and in every other available data we have. Joe Biden is our weakest candidate, not our strongest candidate. We have a process to pick the strongest candidate, and it can be done at the convention. There's no reason we shouldn't do it. We should please, please support a different candidate that has a much higher percentage chance of beating Donald Trump. Okay, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Check him out, gang. I'm sure you already know who he is, gang. Uh, last but certainly not least, Destiny, please. Listen, I think that Joe Biden is just setting up for an epic uh, debate performance in round two. Okay, he was flubbing this one so that he's the underdog. He's going to come and he's going to demolish Trump. And you know what? Even yeah. if he doesn't, Democrats rig elections anyways. We're just going to use more mail-in ballots and take it no matter what. Or stuff the ballot boxes, whatever we have to do. Okay, we'll get it done. They'll be making the film 5,000 mules after the next election, all right? Um, realistically, though, I, I mean, like... I, like, I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not like a huge Biden loyalist. Like, if, if there legitimately was a candidate that seemed like there was less volatility around him and, like, this guy could definitely do it, uh, then maybe. But I just, I think that people downplay how much volatility there would be introducing a new candidate at this stage. Um, there's just so much uncertainty. There are so many things that could go wrong. You know, you could swap about it. Maybe it'd be amazing. Maybe not. But my position has been and will continue to be, unless he has, like, a massive, you know, mistake at another debate or the polls start to slip significantly, I think you kind of, you got to ride this one out. Okay. Thank you, all of you, for being here. If you need to go, I, I release you. Okay, I'm freeing the hostages. The IDF has come in, destroyed a whole, <laughs> destroyed like they? five whole like villages, and now all three of you are free if you need to go. I'm going to read my super chats because people have paid me good money to read stuff on the screen, okay? But uh, other than that, um, thank you for being here, and maybe we can do this again sometime. Thank you. Thank you, Wick. Thank you, Brianna and Destiny. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot. Let's hope we win. Bye -bye. Take care. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, so I guess before I get to the super chats, can I just say, since it's all of us here, right? And now we're all friends. Okay. I, I remain unconvinced, Brianna. I remain unconvinced. Like people keep saying things like all the polls show that there are better candidates. I don't see those polls. I see polls like from the Daily Mail that was just dropped two, uh, two days ago where mm -hmm. you have biden down by five that's bad but then you have every other serious contender other than michelle obama down by double digits 
Kamala sure. Harris is down by 11, right? Then we have the 538 averages, which shows, again, in a direct matchup between Biden and Harris, Biden's got 48% chance to win. Harris has got like a 20-something percent chance to win. So when people keep pushing this narrative that we see all these polls, all this data that shows this is going to happen, this does not line up from what I've seen on the ground. This only lines up if... Again, you're buying what the media is selling here. And I do think that uh, places like the New York Times editorial board, uh, that uh, you have uh, Politico and these other um, institutions, and then you have the podcaster class too. They stand to gain a lot of money if Trump wins. And I know that's a little conspiratorial, but it's something that is in the no, back of I my mind. No, I think that's 100%. Yeah. I mean, I think I would assume all three of us would agree that Trump, uh, you know, got a lot of free press, and he was such a story that was part of why he won the nomination in 2016. We'd all agree with that. So, I, I don't, I don't think that's crazy. I was, you know, Wick. I, I, I hope today, and Stephen, I hope you sense this too. I'm not as certain about this as Jenk is. I really, again, I feel 60 40 about this. I think you're making a really good point with the, the polls, Wick. Uh, I've seen other internal polls, I think are a little less charitable than what you're talking about. But it's, it's not really a clear case about what to do here. So I think that's really well said. Okay, um, let me read the super chats real quick. And then I'll, I'll end this stream. Five dollars from Pillow Steam. Do you think it would be better if Kamala dropped off the ticket instead? No, that would be worse. It's got all the downsides of dropping Biden, right? And none of the upsides. I think that dropping Kamala would be just worse. Ten dollars from Running Joke. Thank you, Wick, for hosting this. Love you. I love you too. Romantically and sexually. Thank you for the ten dollars. Uh, Five dollars from Go Away. Centrist status quo liberalism has just swept the United Kingdom. Don't count it out yet. Thank you for the five dollars. $2 from Parallax. Ask Senk to duel me for creative control of TYT. Not for $2. You got to pay him pony up a little more, buddy. Uh, $10 from Origin of Logos. Destiny, I got a bone to pick with you on this election. We should set up a debate. Um, okay. Uh, $10 from Still Alive. I asked this on TYT's uh, The Young Turks channel, but I'll ask it here. What do you guys think of Dr. Lichtman's 13 keys to the White House? Think he's legit? He thinks Biden dropping out would be a huge mistake for Dems. I tend to agree with this man. Uh, but what do the rest of you think? Have you heard of him? I, I haven't seen this. The keys to the White House guy? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, don't, I don't put much stock in like the election forecasting stuff for people that have their own little thing. I, I don't know. Maybe in like 10 more elections, maybe it'll be fun, but... I just don't care much about it. It, may, it might be really good. I just haven't looked much into sure, it. Yeah. Fair enough. I've seen him speak. Uh, he echoes a lot of the fears that I have with this. But again, I can't. I don't. I can't speak for his um, accuracy in, in all this. Five dollars from Manny to the max. Wick, can you ask each person what is the most important political issue? Uh, okay, uh, Destiny, what's your most political important issue in this election? Um, depends on like for the general, like when you're talking about Donald Trump, uh, I think that presidents should share, I think there are certain core American values, like that if you are a U.S. citizen, you should have, I think some of those values should probably revolve around like democracy. <laughs> uh, and I think that Trump is a deeply anti-democratic president. Um, I think that Trump, uh, I think it's pretty much undeniable by any reasonable person who's willing to go through the factual record that Trump attempted an insurrection and failed. And uh, I, that's just, that's it. I mean, that's fair. What about um, you? Yeah, um, it, exact same answer. Democracy is on the ballot. Uh, you know, what Trump did on January 6th is terrifying. Uh, Stephen, something you talk on your show about a lot. What is the exact stat? It's like 70% of, um, of Republicans like don't even think the last election was valid. That is terrifying for me as someone that loves this country and believes in democracy. So uh, as painful as it is for me as a feminist, uh, I do not care about abortion or women's rights or paid daycare or any of those issues as much as democracy. Literally all I care about. Okay. $5 from Parallax. Jenk has failed over the entirety of this debate to name and argue in favor of. A candidate to replace Biden. Lots of hand-wringing, no solutions. Okay. Um, well, to that point, Brianna, and I want to push you on this a little bit when you say like i have no preference i just want biden out it does feel like and i know you've you've uh i don't think i said that when when i asked you if if you preferred kamala you did say oh that... i didn't find biden out that's what i meant okay fair enough uh but yeah i think that like a lot of this comes off as well you wanna you wanna take the wheel 
but you don't have a map to where we want want to get to go. Like we all want to get to the same destination. We're all going sure. to the same place, but we. I would feel more comfortable if the people who were advocating for Biden dropping out had a roadmap that they could walk me through, but they tend okay. not to. I do. By all means. Okay, so this would be my preferred thing uh, to happen. Uh, so, well, my preferred thing is Biden mans up and comes up with an actual plan to turn this campaign around, does more appearances. Stephen, I liked what you said about him speaking more from the heart. Uh, you know, this thing where he goes on stage and reads the Democratic talking points. It feels like bullshit. It is bullshit. It doesn't work. That's not how politics works. But if he does drop out, this is what I would like to see. I'd like to see Biden make an announcement, say that he realizes his health issues make him not able to continue. I would like to see him say he would prefer for Harris to be the nominee, but to say he will trust a convention to do the thing. Um, you know, at that point, we go have the convention. There is a effort to, uh, like, prepare for, uh, you know, donations are coming in. The Democratic Party starts figuring out, uh, you know, where the field offices are going to be. We start basically figuring out this parallel operation. And, you know, you spin this up in the swing states, focusing there. You build up the infrastructure and the rest of it. And you make really sure that those candidates are vetted. I mean, what, mm -hmm. what part of that doesn't feel? Well, it, it just feels easier yeah. said than done. Um, to be very oh, frank. Oh, God, Jesus. No one knows that. Yes, obviously. <laughs> and I, there's just too many um, unknowns uh, that could come up. I think Destiny touched on this over and over again, and I echo his sentiment here. There's just too many points of failure that are introduced. What we have sure. is the devil we know. We know what uh, Biden has problems with. We know where he needs to fix his shit. We know what he needs to do, right? I think we all are in agreement of what he needs to do to turn this around. And again, we aren't that down, right? I I, I think Jenk really oversold his hand and, and Congressman Walsh called him on this. We are behind, but we are not right. lethally behind. If we put our shoulders to the wheel, we could turn this around. There's a real possibility. Now, is that a guarantee? No but I think it's a much better chance than all these unknowns. Uh, let me get through the, these last ones and I'll, I'll let you go. I know you guys need to go. Um, $5 from another new account. If you'll vote for anyone, even Biden in a coma over Trump, how devastating is it going to be for everyone here when Trump wins? How many riots? $5 from Manny to the Max. Uh, well, I already read that one. Sorry. $2 from uh, Simon Allen. Good one, Wick. Thank you. $2 from Manny to the Max. Dem should ask Tulsi to come To be back. clear, just real quick on that dono. Like, the only people that have rioted over an election law so far have mm -hmm. been, uh, or at least in recent history, have been Republicans. So. That's right. $2 from Manny to the Max. Both candidates are bad. Both third party are written. $5 oh. from Firechild. We've seen how accurate the polls are for the last several years, haven't we? Um... They're relatively accurate. As much as people like to shit on them, they're pretty fairly accurate. Uh, five. Uh, I'm sorry, $2 from Tesco Johnson. We need Sharia law now. Thank you for the $2. Uh, $5 from the scorned one. So Jenk wants the DNC oligarchs to pick our candidate. If anyone <laughs> else suggested that, he would call them establishment hacks. Uh, that is a worry I have, right? This feels anti-democratic. Anti I don't. I, I know they disagreed with this, but it feels really un undemocratic. Uh, I believe 15 million people voted for Joe Biden in this primary, in the 2024 primary. To just toss all those votes out feels bad. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Am I, do I not understand anything? What did, voted for? There was no primary this year, no? There was. We yes, voted in it. I voted of. in it. Like, again, there was a whole big push by uh, Rashida Tlaib to vote, like, ceasefire now in a lot of these primaries. But people came out and they voted for Biden. There were other candidates on these ballots, not all of them. But oh, some. because they still held. Oh, okay. but I, I, I do have to push back a little bit, Wick. Please. I mean, I agree with you, but it's also true there was a huge effort that Jenk can speak to to keep him off the ballot in key states. Uh, you know, here in Massachusetts, I didn't have like Jenk was not on our ballot, right? So I, I hear what you're saying, but let's not pretend like I. I don't believe this party conspiracy stuff to the degree that Jenk does. I think there's some truth in it. It's not as big a variable in my mind, but it is absolutely true that the party did try to stop okay. third party candidates from getting on the ballot and succeeded in many cases. There's a lawsuit, if I'm remembering correctly, 
that Jenk fought and spent a ton of money in, and the DNC still decided to keep him off the ballot. So I, I'm just saying it wasn't like people say there was a primary. This was not our most shining open moment of a primary, in my view. Fair enough. Two dollars from Zach. How's that presidential run going, Jenk? Thank you for the two dollars. <laughs> Uh, two dollars for Manny to the max. Blueberry pie, strawberry cake, twenty twenty four. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, I think. Oh, two dollars from the Alex Kirsch Project. Testicle Johnson drinks shots of. Okay, I'm not gonna read all these two dollar ones that <laughs> just insult each other. Okay. Damn. Thank you again for coming, gang. Once again, we'll see you next week. We got some great shows coming up. But for now. Before we go, uh, Before Stephen, go. did you notice when you asked Jank point blank if he was going to vote for Biden that he framed it like as though there were two candidates? I thought that yeah, was well, because something that he says over and over again, he keeps saying vote against Trump, vote against Trump, vote against Trump, yeah. and then he'll say, and then he was saying vote for the. I was going to push him, but I don't feel like fighting over it anymore. But like at the end, he said he would vote for the candidate most likely to beat Trump, which yeah. technically leaves him wiggle room that even if it was a two party race at the end, he could be like, well, even though Biden is getting, you know, 48 percent and Trump is getting 51 percent, this third party candidate that's getting one percent, I actually think they have a higher chance. Win, so we should vote for him instead. If we all vote for him, yeah. like I by whatever else. I, I worry about RFK a lot. Uh, I think it's really under discussed in this race. So, um, you know. I, I think part of my calculus I even get a chance to talk about is that people are going to see Biden weak and more Democrats are going to vote for RFK than Republicans are going to vote for him. So I worry about that. Possibly, yeah, because the cult for Trump like literally sheds. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least as most Legion people don't, but I don't know about people who are nibbling around the edges. The reality is every single thing is super unprecedented in all of this. Yeah. So it's hard to say, you know, what like making any strong predictions at this point is who the f*** knows, you know? I agree. Who's the f knows uh there's five dollars from another new account to say abc news reports that 124 arrests were made after trump won in 2016 at protests i don't know if that's true but it is being super chatted at me so there you go um, <laughs> so it must be true yeah so it must be true look five dollars i'll tell you whatever you want to hear uh gang thank you once again for the show it's been great i'll see you next week on monday peace yeah, out have fun bye bye y'all